on shiny new. Ooh. Jason's name is sliding off the screen. It is. All right. I'm back. <laughs> Had to fix that. Sorry, that was bothering me. Yes, no, it's important. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our first uh, vaccinated VR day here in uh, St. Louis. I'm Eric Levine. I am Jason Thurston. It's been a long time coming. Glad we're back. Uh, this was been over a, over a year? Yeah. It was February last year, I think? That sounds about right. Yeah, that was a, right. was our last one, so thanks for everyone that's going to be tuning in throughout the day. Appreciate you. Uh, we do have actually some interesting contestants today that people may not have seen before. So there's actually two people here from Chicago who just basically asked if they could participate in our Discord, and that was how they got their invites. So they just asked, hey, can I show up? We said, sure. So helping to build the community, it's nice to have, you know, a little bit more grassroots movement there. I'm super excited to see what they're, what they're drafting. Um, what, so obviously since February, there's been a ton of cards that have come oh out. Oh my God, so many cards. What card are you hoping to see drafted today? So one card that I'm really excited about, and I think we're going to see drafted today, is uh, Tasha's Hideous Laughter. Yeah. From AFR. It's the, the one blue blue. Uh, oh, we can even pull it up. Oh yeah, we have the technology. This, we do. This is a real. This is a real stream. Oh okay. <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, we're... Tasha's is. It's a card that when I saw it spoiled, I was kind of like surprised it was printed in the set it was. Yeah. I I I, I kind of expected it to be in like a conspiracy type supplemental set, but it's such a good like casual appeal. This is amazing. This does really cool, fun things for a casual player that, like, in a format like VRD, is actually competitive. And while there's no real support for it in actual Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, right? Like, I've had this cast against me in Limited a couple of times, and spoiler alert, it doesn't do anything, right? Yeah, Unless yeah. you're losing, using it as, like, your very, very late game win condition and control deck, in which case, like, you've probably already won the game. Um, it doesn't make any sense. But in VRD where you can draft cards like Tasha City's Laughter alongside Fractured Sanity, Glimpse the Unthinkable, you know, Ruin Archive Crab, Archive Trap, Crab, Archive all kinds Trap. of stuff. Yeah, there's so much there's so much support for Blue Black Mill or or just a blue based mill deck uh, these days that I, I expect we'll see something like that today. How about you? What's uh what's something you you're interested in seeing today? So I'm it's always interesting to me because we have people who try to make like existing legacy archetypes. Uh, Dragon Rage Chandler, new delirium um, Delver. I'm actually really excited to see if this appears in, like, a graveyard-based storm yes. deck, a really low-to-the-ground... I mean, Mono Red is great in this format. Someone drafts it and does pretty well regularly. I'm just excited to see cards like this that people try to take, like... Because VRD, and you know, is a completely different format yes. than anything else. Like, it's basically vintage cube but way better because you know what you're gonna draft and i love seeing people take these existing constructed archetypes and try to like force them into vrd and see how it works it's always something that i've been fascinated by uh that's what i'm definitely excited for and i think you know I, as you know steven and mark talked about in the last stream when they were talking about cards from Modern Horizons 2 that they expected to see play, this was one of the ones that they were most impressed by. Thanks for the follow, Gushers. Appreciate you. Um, I think that's good. Uh, Player-wise, though, for those of you that have been here before, we do have some returning faces. So we have Brandon Curry back, who's known for some amazing deck building choices. Brandon Brandon is our resident uh, altar of the brood aficionado. <laughs> yeah. He loves he loves a brew, right? And and he's 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 done well. He's done quite well. He with has his, actually his wacky decks. Yeah, he he does really well. He approaches the game in a very different way than I think a lot of people do. Uh, for for better, definitely. Yes. Um, we've also got John Ryan. Yeah, John Ryan kind of John Ryan Hamilton kind of comes at things from from the other side, the opposite sides. I would say Brandon does. John Ryan is, is very interested in uh, stopping you and forcing you to play fair magic with him, playing cards like uh, Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Uh, yeah, he's he's well known for for playing Death and Taxes variants and Legacy, so that's kind of his background. So I would expect to see something like that out of him. Although of course he could play against type. 
Yeah, he he could, and he's you know it's nice to have those two here because they kind of do represent the two opposite sides of the VRD spectrum, and then you have people in between like you know Dan Zelinsky, who's here. He's kind of like he loves a brew. Yes, but he also wants to play like something that's established, and he's like, this is something I like. I'm just gonna throw in a few meme cards in there here and. Yeah, the first time yeah. I was here for a VRD, Dan played a very streamlined uh, Infect deck, Blue Green Infect. To uh, I believe uh, he won that VRD. Yeah, he w- he did. So uh, yeah, he's he's got a, a solid uh, uh, he's got a solid background in this format. Have we have we talked for anybody who's not has not experienced a VRD before? Maybe we should talk a little bit about how this format actually works. Yes. So it's a draft, and everybody knows how a draft works. You have a pack, you open it, you pick a card, you pass. How's that different from VRD? Well, uh, in this case, uh, your pack, everybody ha- in, instead of everybody having a bunch of booster packs, there is effectively one booster pack, and it has one of every card in Vintage, one of every Vintage Legal card. And so the first player will pick one Vintage Legal card, and then we'll go around from the first player to the eighth player, and then we're doing a snake draft. So the eighth player will get to pick eighth and ninth, and then we'll come back around, and everybody's going to pick 45 Vintage Legal cards, And then we're going to build 40-card limited decks, just like we would in a regular draft. Uh, We did just get the question, are we good to go? Yeah, I think we're ready. All right, let's get the draft kicked off then. Sounds great. This is exciting. Yeah, it's it's been too long for this. Oh my gosh, I've been looking forward to this for such a long time. And for those of you watching that don't know, for this we do a Lupe Fiasco (laughs) buy-in. So... (laughs) Our, our buy-in is $50 in food and or liquor, uh, and that is drafted at the end, of course, um, and that's that's kind of our way of getting everyone in and involved. Okay. Am I, am I in the wrong? Okay, I'm in the yep. wrong sheet, so I'm going to just go ahead and uh, do something real quick here. And Oops. I'll, I'll, be, I'll, just, I'll just go ahead and fix that. Here. It's in one of these Firefox windows. There's like seven, so it's fine. Everything's <laughs> fine. Everything is fine. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and oh, let's just. I'm going to go right back to. Uh, we're going to go back to us for a minute. Yeah. While I fix this, we're high tech here. We do our best. Although, in our defense, it has been quite a long time since we've done this. Sorry, guys. Bear with us. That is oh, okay. okay. All right, looks like I am loading up the correct sheet. VRD sheet. Oh. There we go. Oh, my, we are oh, off started. to the races. Okay. We're, we're going. So All right, so just, we're going to go to draft. draft. Okay. There we I'm are. Gonna have to yeah, we're going to have to resize this. Resize this bad boy here. Okay. Why is it so zoomed in? Window control minus minus. No. Wait. View. Stop. Don't don't unload the page. Oh. Uh, reload the page. Mark, you may need to zoom out here for this to work. Oh, okay. There we go. That's I've, a bit I've far. Really done it. Here. Never mind. We we got it. Maybe. <laughs> it's a little less responsive, maybe, than what I'm used to. Yeah. Okay. So we're 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 really off. Very quickly here. Okay. All right. So we have the first eight picks, and in order, we have Black Lotus, Time Vault, Recall, Soul Ring, Mox Jet, Sapphire, Mana Crypt, and Alec went for Mox Pearl. So, and Fast Bond, actually. Now, we haven't had Walk drafted yet, which is interesting. I think our first chance is either going to be Brandon, who is trying to draft a mill strategy. Uh, or we are going to end up with potentially Dan Zelinsky drafting Time Walk here because he did take Sapphire, which makes me think he's probably in on blue. Yeah, generally that seems most uh, likely. Yeah. If we're if we're drafting, if we're we're, we're, gonna, we're grab Sapphire early, I think that's that's very reasonable. Interesting to see the Mox Jet, Mox Jet, Mox Sapphire. I think those do flip flop quite a lot. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about Library not being taken yet? I think it's fine. I think library is actually not like it's not an amazing card in this format. No, it's really not. Um, yeah, I I do agree with that. Hyphenated uh, pearl over emerald to pair with a fast bond is a little strange. Yeah, that does seem like a. Uh, <coughs> pardon me, my allergies are really getting me a little bit of a regret pick. Yeah, right I, there already. I think it is interesting though, 
that we haven't like Emerald seems to be one of those Moxen along with Ruby that occasionally does fall to late in the two or early in the three. I can't imagine Alec thinks he's getting it on the swing back there. No, certainly not. I, I, I there's there's no way those those Moxes will outlive round two. You know, we've already drafted some of the pseudo power here. Uh, we've got Time Vault out. We've got yep. Soul Ring and Mana Crypt out here. Nice to see those going early, being a properly appreciated. Yeah. And we'll see uh, Mana Vault here coming in as well pretty soon, I'm sure. And uh, Mason and Andrew are two Chicago natives, correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes. So I, I don't know anything about what they're drafting. Um, I didn't talk with them beforehand at all. For those of you that have watched before, you'll notice Mr. Stephen Hagen, typically on commentary, was audibled in today. Uh, his his lists are really good. He's got some <laughs> spicy stuff going on here. Let yeah. The card window open so that I can pull up cards when the time comes because I feel like that might be relevant at some point. Yeah. He he is going for, I I mean he had the. Witherbloom Chain of Smog combo is one list. Yes. He's got three lists, basically, that he has said, okay, these are what I want to go for today. Uh, and it's going to be very, very interesting to see what he ends up with. It looks like we're... Brandon's debating his pick here, which him on Blue Black Mill uh, is something that I can't wait to see. Yeah, and how the, the question here is what kind of cards is he going to take to support that archetype? You know, because at this point, you want to be picking just the generically powerful cards, right? Yeah, you don't necessarily want something that's in your archetype, because you don't know for sure if someone else is going to cut you off from it. Especially being a snake draft, it's it makes it a lot more important for your first five picks. You, you have to hit on those. Yep. So you do want those generically powerful cards that can go in basically any type of deck to either accelerate you, generate card advantage, just something from the you know theory crafting standpoint that is impactful. Uh, and he had, I you saw the list as well, yes. he was looking at like your mana drains, your force of wills, your typical blue control spells, um, that it seemed like he had an archetype that he wanted to control the game out and then just mill you out in the end. Yeah, if Brandon can, uh, you know, stop the combo decks from from getting him early, I think he'll be able to, with with the list that we saw, I think he'll be able to mill people out pretty handily, but it's, it's all about getting to a point where you can afford to pay three mana for Tasha's hideous laughter without exposing yourself to just getting wrecked, right? Yeah. Because that's, that's the kind of thing that can happen in this format. Now, some of the one-card combos, we did uh, we did stop some of that nonsense. I think that's important to mention. We, we uh, in our last VRD, we did have the Draft Matters cards working. Uh, they, they worked, right? So you could cast Aether Searcher and then go get your Arcane Savant and then go cast your Kindred Charge or your Heat Shimmer or your Twin Flame or whatever. Yeah. And have your, your sweet <laughs> one one card uh, tinkerable splinter twin combo that no longer works we've uh, we've put yeah. the kibosh on that so oh Brandon going for Narset Parter of Veil so I think we're gonna oh my access has expired oh that's awesome I love it when my access has expired <laughs> to VRD alright so let's reload this document Narset he's definitely going okay, the more controlling powerful cards then to start with absolutely and Narset is a very pow powerful card in this format not just you know not just because of the, the, the locking people out of, of their, their extra draws, but also because there's so many wheels available in this format. Yeah. And that's probably something Brandon's going to look to take advantage of. You know, it's 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 possible that he can he can wheel time twister here, though we'll see. Yeah. Well and and the interesting thing too is, you know, he when we looked at his list, he had like Hall Breacher, he had a lot of the wheel of the anti wheel effects on there. So it'll be interesting to see if part of his mill strategy is you know, wheels, which typically you wouldn't do with your anti-wheel stuff, but Brandon's deck building, yeah. he, he loves that stuff for some reason, so it, it'll be interesting to see that. Yeah, he's going to have a fun take on that. Uh, he's the kind of person that I, you know, if, if anybody is going to take a Narset and a Hull Breacher in a blue-black deck and splash red for Riel, uh, Brandon would be the person to do that. Now, he would. That seems very unlikely, but I'm going to put Riel up on the screen just, just, just so I can hope. I can, yeah, I can we, we hope can pray dream. that it's there. Hey, thanks so, so good for the follow. Appreciate that. And yeah, then, there it is. Now, That's <laughs> Mark and Steven did talk about this in the uh, the 2020 card recap yeah. stream uh, a little bit ago, and they did conclude, basically, this is a win more card, right? This is unlikely to be drafted, but it's fun to think about. It's fun to, to consider. It is. Uh, it's it's currently, <laughs> or it's it's something that I think, 
like you said, if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be Brandon. It may be Alec, too. Ooh, Ooh. so we have Sapphire and Ruby. Dan is picking up the Ruby, so we, we, I mean, you know, he may be, he may be looking to go blue-red, or he may just be picking up the mocks because, well, it's the best mocks available at this moment. Yeah. I expect Mesa to pick up Emerald here. Yep, there we go, and Emerald. So, it's interesting because Dan has been playing blue-red Delver a lot lately, so I wonder if he's going to be the kind of guy, because like we talked about, he kind of takes some of these streamlined archetypes and runs with them. So we might see a Delver of Secrets, a Dragon's Rage Channel, or a Sprite Dragon out of him, things like that. Yeah. Demonic Tutor for Steven and Mana Drain for Joe. Okay. All right, so we still have a few interesting cards available. Mana Vault is still out there. I expect yeah. that to go in the next... Tinker, too. Two picks. Yeah, Tinker. Tinker does get first picked sometimes. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've been surprised by how early Tinker has gone in some of the uh, asynchronous online drafts that I've seen. Mm -hmm. I was looking at some of those this morning over coffee, and I saw a first pick Tinker. I went, whoa! So... And this, this may be... One of these two picks may be where it happens, because if John's on, like, Artifact Storm... Or if Andrew just wants to go all in on Tinker Time Vault, uh, I feel like this these next four picks might be the spot where they feel they have to take it. If I'm Andrew here, I think I'm taking Tinker. Yeah. I think that's the uh, yeah exactly letting the, letting the uh, yeah. Time Vault player get, get tinker. tinker. Okay. Give me one of one of these emojis, <laughs> right? That's what we're looking for here. And oh, there it is, Tinker. Andrew Andrew grabs Tinker as predicted. Yeah. Uh, John Ryan with the with the Lotus picks up a Time Time Walk. walk. That's makes about a lot time. Of sense. Yeah. Uh, and Vamp. Okay, so we've we've got our two best tutors, well, three best tutors really with Tinker yeah. out there already. Um, and now is is Andrew gonna go for Volt Key before he gets shut off? Or well, the thing about I think Volt it's high. Key is there's so many keys, right? There there's are Tezzeret, now. There's there's Voltaic Key. There's Manifold. Manifold. Key, there's there's Voltaic Manifold. Servant. There's others even. Yeah. Like, you, the, the nice thing about Voltaic or t Volt Key in this format is you you can you have so many so options. Long yeah, you now. can. Mana Vault for Andrew. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. He's one one thing about the uh, the Time Vault deck is that you are pressed to make big plays like Tezzeret fairly early. So yes, you, you need are. That fast mana. Yeah, which is it's interesting because I I feel like round one you are you know first pick you always take the Time Vault mm -hmm. and two or three you're taking fast mana or Tinker if that's where you're gonna go. Yep. That's that's the only way that I think it goes. Oh, Force of Will for Joe. So Joe is going very. Controlly to start with. Yeah, Joe picking up Force of Will, premium counterspell in this format, of course. You know, everybody's going to be playing blue, that's very normal, but it's uh, it's it's pretty easy to pick up cards that, that pitch to Force of Will. It turns out there's quite a few blue cards. And Seal from Steven in Texas Ranger had a question, how does one draft asynchronously in VRD? Not very well. It does take forever. Yeah, Hyphenated says it usually takes three to five weeks. That, you know, that's that's consistent with my experiences with asynchronous fantasy sports drafts. So yes. That doesn't really surprise me. Yeah. Uh, so, Imp Seal Thought Seize. Okay. So, Mason coming off that first pick, Mox Jet with a Thought Seize, looking to go with a disruptive strategy here, I would bet. And there's Twister Ooh. from Mr. Zelensky. Dan, okay. Dan hacking the Time Twister from Brandon right yeah. before that pick. That's got to hurt. I'm guessing Brandon probably wanted that Twister. Yeah. That's... Uh... That's going to be interesting, although it's, I will say, seeing now that a lot of the cards that Steven wanted from the list that he showed us are gone, yep. not to him, is going to be interesting to see, because I feel like when he took that Soul Ring, he had to know yes. he wasn't getting a Mox after that. Of course, yeah. Once you once you take that Soul Ring, you look at the number of picks that are that are coming around, eight picks between you and your next pick, you, 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 just, you just have to know Soul Ring is your piece of fast mana. Now, I like yeah. that Soul Ring pick. I, I, I do, too. Uh, the the lists that he showed us were pretty non-intensive mm -hmm. on colored mana, so that's that helps a lot. Uh, what do what do you think Brandon goes here? Do you think we go mill right away? I think Brandon might take some kind of powerful counter magic here. I think Brandon's more likely to take a controlling piece, something that's mm -hmm. more contested, because I looking looking at what we're seeing here, I think it's unlike. I, I just I just don't think these other players. Are going to want the mill cards now? No, the Chicago folks are wild cards, right? Yeah, I, they are. Yeah, I have I, no read on those folks other than that they're cool. Right? Yeah, they, they they are cool people, and I I think it's 
you know, we have Tinker Time Vault, so yeah. we know that for sure. Yeah, Andrew's Andrew's pretty locked in. That's a that's a deck, and he's gonna want that Counter Magic too. He's gonna, you know, yep. obviously he would have wanted Force of Will, but there's no way he was getting that. I'd expect Andrew to possibly pick up Force of Negation if it's still available, which I expect it not to be, frankly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing both of them, the Chicago folks are wild cards. Counterspell, I could see Counterspell, or I could see, you know, like you said, a Force of Negation or Pact of Negation. Yeah. Something something to to just let Brandon. Counterspell and, seems and the good call. But, oh, brainstorm. brainstorm. Okay. I don't necessarily disagree with that. Counterspell this high is kind of a wild card pick. I feel like here you do want your free spells. Oh, channel. Ooh, Alec picking up channel. Now, I do like a fast bond channel deck. Alec probably looking to power out some big Eldrazi here. Yeah. And that's and, on Verdant Catacombs. Okay, so we're going to go for a green-based, yes, yep. very obviously green-based strategy here. Without the Emerald. Yes, no emerald. Yeah. That's a uh... that's that's still strange to me. Fetches, fetches, and fours seem to be. It seems like every VRD fetches go earlier and earlier. Yes. Now, one phenomenon that we often see in VRD, at least here in in St. Louis, is that when somebody picks a land, that mm -hmm. opens the floodgates for a run on lands. And frankly, I think that when play and and, and I did this myself, so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk crap about myself here. Lutri, cute little other otter baby. Okay, okay, so before I go on my land rant, let's pull up Lutri because this is a big deal. Lutri right here. I agree, Popo. Lut oh. Lutri the Spell Chaser. Of course, this card banned in Commander for the very reason that it's powerful in this one of format. Each non-land card in Brandon's deck is going to have a different name unless he picks up a Squadron Hawk or something, uh, in which case he would be allowed to have four. Um, but Lutri is a fantastic companion here um, and will allow Brandon to just flash that in in response to his own spell copy, something like Tasha's Hideous Laughter or Fractured Sanity, and really get somebody. Uh, we did just get a hole breacher from Dan after mm. picking Time Twister, so yep. he may be on 10 wheels, yeah, the we, VRD special. <laughs> we may very well see Dan picking up some of the other wheels cards like uh, Wheel of Fortune, Wheel of Misfortune, uh, a few different options. Uh, hyphenated, the exact rule on Squadron Hawk-like cards is anything that self-tutors, something like Squadron Hawk or Howling Wolf or Avarax. If you pick it, you get four copies. Four. Uh, same with Snow-Covered Lands. Every time you pick them, you get four. Uh, we did see another land there from Mason. Yep. So we have, as you said, you know, the floodgates are now open. Right. So we've got, and there's an opposition agent from I Mr. Really Hagen. I really like Steven's discipline here. Taking the opposition agent, not succumbing to the peer pressure of the run on lands. Yeah. I think that that is so important in this format to, to say, okay, I, I'm, I understand that there are other people here, and I'm going to react to their strategies, right? But, I'm, but I think the land run is so much peer pressure. It I, is. I, I really like it, you know. And obviously, I think the people picking Misty Rainforest and Scalding Tarn are making smart picks, right? Those are great uh, yeah, cards. Yeah, those are. And there, there we have a Delta. I think it's, you know. Uh, yeah, so card pool limits. Basically, if there's something that you can tutor or you can draft unlimited of, what's up, JP? Good to see you. You get four, and you can pick them an unlimited number of times. So persistent petitioners, relentless rats, stuff like that. You can pick and every time you get four. And then yeah, vintage legality is basically the big one. And there's a strand and a vista. So John Ryan going back to back. What's up Tim? On the lands. Yeah, we were right. talking I was uh, my 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 very good friend Tim who I grew up playing magic with yeah. was in chat here and uh, I was talking to him at dinner the other day about uh, the run on lands when I was visiting him in yeah. Massachusetts. <laughs> hey, Nat, how's it going? Yeah, what's up, Nat? Good to see you. Oko, okay. Oh, Oko is Broco, so Jeez. this is exciting. Let's take a look at everybody's favorite Planeswalker. Up. Oh, let's take a look at this list of cards with Oko. Yeah, there we go. Mr. 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 Thief of Crowns. Oh, well, we'll get there. The, the Oko. Oko, Thief of Crowns. Uh, there were so when I was at my last uh, Japanese GP, there were people at, in the playing in the GP who were literally wearing elk antlers. Yeah, uh, because this card was still legal. Yep. Uh, Ooh, Voidwalker out of Mr. Hagen there. That's right, a so good one. So actually, Steven yes. all in on the strat. So he, he it's interesting because he hasn't been cut off at all yet. No, Steven he, is uh, other than other than the lack of Moxen. Stephen is is going straight down the line for his plan, and he's taking the most widely applicable cards. I do agree, hyphenated. That is a, a quite a late Oko. It's very yeah. good, but it's good to see Douthy Voidwalker here, uh, playing, of course, the role of one-sided uh, Leyline of the Void here. 
And then we have Dak Faden and the Recall Mana Drain. Like, I okay. So Mason, it looks like going for just a, almost like a Brock strategy here. Just a basic control, a ponder. Yep. Out of Dan there. I think uh, it's very, I think a disruptive strategy that relies on these, uh, you know, one mana, one mana discard spells, your thoughts, these Inquisition, Duress type of cards, I think is, is a, an archetype that should be very successful here. I know that in, uh, I think BRD won here in St. Louis, Mark drafted a deck like that and had some yep. success with it. He did. Uh, Snapcaster Mage out of Brandon. So he, he actually has been sticking so far with the generically powerful cards that are in his colors, which... I am impressed by the discipline from yeah, him. Really smart, <laughs> really disciplined. I, I think Brandon's got his eyes on the prize this time. He does, for he, sure. He he wants to win. He wants to win his way, but he wants to win this year, this 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 BRD. And there is the Sylvan Library, finally. All right, so we are, are we breaking the uh, the seal on revised duels with literal Bayou? Yes, Bayou is how the next land... Uh, <laughs> flood starts. That is surprising. Because we've kicked off... One, Does, two, three, four blue fetches, right? Yeah, yeah. So those are done. JTMS for Brandon. Solid strat there. Yeah. I, I like that a lot for him. Um, although without fetch lands, really. Yes. And uh, of course, I, I should note that Prismatic Vista from John Ryan, another fantastic card, um, deserves to go very early. Very, very happy to see that. So four black drafters is a lot, but it's kind of interesting because Steven is in a black green. And so far has been uncut off yep. based on what he showed us. So his strategy is completely uninterrupted. Yeah, and that's I think that's likely to be the case. Uh, black green, not you know, not a traditionally like sought after VRD archetype, right? Because yeah. it does not possess the color blue, everyone's favorite color in VRD. T C that's another solid one there. I'm I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen more draw at this point although i guess the land flood started early yeah we had the the land flood a couple rounds a couple rounds early i usually see that around around seven around eight I yeah think. but i think people have realized that the good lands the good blue fetches should go early yeah. and if you really want to dual land you need to pick it now if yeah. you want that duel. Now, there are a lot of good options, right? There's the shock lands. There's the fast lands. There's, you know, all, uh, pain lands, right? And in this format, the difference, if you're not fetching it, the difference between Underground Sea and Underground River, not that big. There's our trap. All right. So we're, we're in blue, black, green for Mason there with the trap. And Steven snaps up the duress, sees the chance to uh, take that away before before Mason can get it. Yeah, uh, and it's, yeah, Caterberg, it's actually very interesting. We have not seen very many walkers at all. I mean, Oko didn't go until, what is that, the fifth round? Round five, yeah. I, oh, Triomes are very important, too. Oh, yeah. And, yes, yeah, so there's some talk of the Aluren Dungeon deck. Yep. Uh, it's true, Steven hasn't picked any lands yet. Yeah, the Aluren Dungeon deck is very interesting. I'm sure we'll see it today with a Sererek. Assessor Sererek. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this yes. this this person, this being the lich. Uh, yeah. This this card is an all right. I I hope it happens. Yeah. I really want it to happen on stream today. Because of course, what you do is you get a learn out, and then you just play a Sarah uh, a jillion times, uh, and you never go to Tomb of Annihilation, right? You instead you go to Lo Lost Mine of Van Delver, and you mm -hmm. go through the uh, I believe it's the Dark Pool. Uh, yes. in the middle of uh, level three to drain your opponent for one, and you do that. A number of times. Uh, Hall Breacher is not available. It was, in fact, taken in the fourth round by, uh, by Dan. Dan. Yep. Uh, so we just had a force of negation, finally, to Mr. Swift, and then we have preordain there for John Ryan, as well as UC. So we yep. had, prior to UC, Bayou, which cracked the seal. Yep. Trap Vulk and UC now. I am very impressed with the, uh, again, with the discipline of these drafters, not, not just going off and, like, Sometimes we start the run on lands, and then two rounds later we're picking cards like Sunken Hollow. We're not yeah. there, and that makes me happy. This is this is this is going to be a set of eight good decks today, I think. Yeah, I think I think so, and I think what we're seeing so far is there's not a lot of, I, and again, it, everyone is picking generically powerful cards so far, which means that even if they are cut off from their archetype, they're still able to audible into something that is powerful. Do you think, okay, so here's my theory, right? Everybody loves to brew. Everybody loves to have a good time. But we've waited so long for this in-person VRD. I think, I don't, I think 
nobody nobody wants to draft a pile, right? Oh yeah. I think no. everybody is just like, I gotta draft the best deck I can. Yeah. Everybody's there. And I, that's really exciting to me. Yeah, I, I think so as well. I think that's one of the, you know, Brandon being disciplined, we have Steven being disciplined, these the, everyone is just being so disciplined about what they're getting and it's what is that, Tenorite? Yep. Of course. I like that a lot for the Tinker deck. What does that say? Teferi. Oh, Teferi. oh sorry. Which one? Because yeah, we're he, need we have. On Teferi. He doesn't have any white mana yet. Interestingly enough. So it's got to be time. Really? Okay. okay. We're going for Teferi Time Raveler. Very powerful card. Happy to see that. Up top. Oh, yep, there it is. Uh, which again, so he Andrew is just all in on control. Yeah, he's he's just trying to control the game out and execute the Tinker Time Walk. Yep, or Tinker Time Vault. Sorry. Round uh, we, six, followed by him to Turok for Steven. Steven looking to get those disruptive options in first, and then I think Steven is going to be playing uh, two card Monty here. Yeah, with the yeah. Uh, with the Witherbloom Chain, with the Douthy Voidwalker, presumably mm -hmm. Helm of Obedience, right? Yeah. Looking for uh, looking for those just two card combos and just trying to prolong the game until he can produce one of them. It's interesting that we haven't had a reanimator yet. No, we don't. And it, I think the the distribution of some of the tutors Ooh. might uh, overgrown tomb gone. That's going to hurt Steven a little bit there. Wow, that's a surprise. But Steven can still pick up uh, Lanowar Wastes cards yeah. like that. That'll be fine. He doesn't have any fetches, so yeah, true. Uh, Grim Monolith there, so we see. Dan seems to be on the uh, John Finkel plan here. Yes. <laughs> just just get Wheels, Storm, and Combo. Um, yeah, yeah, we don't have a Mud Drafter, and we don't have a Reanimator Drafter, which right. is interesting because I feel like it seems like every each of the past few VRDs we've had someone on Reanimator. Yes, and I yeah we don't have we don't have a Karn the Great Creator out there in the world yet either. So, um, and that's a card that I expected to see picked already, frankly. Yeah, I, I definitely agree, because Mud is such a powerful strategy in this format. That's a good point, though. Uh, here in the chat, uh, we have, a, a, if nobody's attacking your life total, Ancient Tomb is just a generally powerful card, so I would be shocked to not see it uh, come up at some point soon, right? Yeah. Because if we don't have a Mono Red Drafter, and we currently don't, uh, and it does not look like Dan is going to be filling that hyper-aggressive role. No. So everybody's just going to sort of sit back and do their thing. Now, it's it's interesting. I'm curious what Joe is doing, because so far, we just have control spells, fixing, and walkers. And you can kind of get an idea for what everyone else is doing. Yep. You know, we've got Spells Matter from Brandon. We've mm -hmm. got Wheels from Dan. We have, obviously, Tinker Time Vault. Yep. And the other one here is John Ryan. And I think those two players have just, if you look at what they've drafted, it's literally... I'm not signaling anything yet, yeah. other than colors. Uh, Joe and John Ryan are looking to sort of fall into these unoccupied archetypes here. I think yeah. we might see a Storm or Reanimator deck out of John Ryan here. Yeah. Especially because he hasn't picked up the powerful counter spells or anything like that yet. No. Right? We're going to see some kind of combo deck from John Ryan. I will say I really like the double fetch pickup here from Alec. I'm sure we're looking at uh, like a Crucible base. Oh, yeah, likely. for sure. We're going to see Crucible and maybe Ramanac Excavator out of him. Mm-hmm. A mystical tutor there out of Brandon. That's that's good. Is that best available? Eight. Yeah. So that's that's a pretty good pick there. And Mox Diamond. Mm. Oh, stolen from Alec, yep. who I'm sure would have loved that on the swing around. Yeah. Dan. Dan is a, a a really good drafter, and he knows when those cards that he wants are going to are about to become available. He uh, unavailable rather. I think he has a really good sense of he does other players' priorities, mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the things that you know. I mean. That took him to a VRD championship in VRD two, right? Yeah, like that's that's how he got there. Yeah, and he's it's it's always interesting to draft when it's people you know, mm -hmm. and that's one of the reasons I was excited for Andrew and Mason to be here because they're just wild cards. Yeah, they you know really... they they're not regulars here, so people don't necessarily know their draft strategies. Yeah, strip mine is still available. Yes, um, Mason picking up Green Sun Zenith. Ooh. Okay, all right, interesting. That's, uh... I like it. I'm really interested to see where we're going to go from here. I'm just going to yeah. put GSZ up on the board. Finally, Lily of the Veil is off the board to Steven. Lily makes sense. Great pickup for Steven yeah. here. He's going to want to play hand attrition yet. 
Do we have an OMG? This card hasn't been picked uh, list yet. I just... There's there's plenty of walkers available on that list. Uh, Lily just went merchant scroll merchant to Joe. Scroll. Wow, S- oh, that is interesting. Yeah, Sylvan Library has still not been picked. Oh, Sylvan Library actually was picked up by Alec in round six. Yes, yes. Oh, oh sorry, Library of Alexandria. Library, Library of Alexandria still around. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Tundra spell pierce. So yeah, we do see John going for these generic and dark writ. John so grabs we, the dark writ, and now we know, right? We're we know, on storm. We're probably on storm. You could also you all could also do some reanimation with dark writ. I also think library is overrated. As we were discussing earlier, I think that yeah. card is mediocre at best in this format. Yeah, and this and this format, it's not that great because it tends to be a lot faster than vintage. Yeah, and it's it, library in this format is very similar to library in vintage cube. Mystical uh, dispute. Where if you have it when when you have it and you can kind of craft something around it it can be good but yeah it's not good enough to craft something around it uh, if, mm-hmm. and spend a pick on it early and so mystical dispute then to andrew so we we are again he's on full control here dragon rage channel here there is. we go all right okay so joe showing his cards here a little bit he sees john ryan picking up the dark ritual and so he knows he can move in he's got that volcanic island he's got that deck fade scalding tarn force of will mana drain Recall. Recall. So he's he's got a very good just dis- like fast low to the ground strategy that he can go for now. Uh, Veil of Summer from Steven, That's going to be good for him. I love a Veil of Summer. That's, yeah. That's such a high priority pick if you're not a blue deck, or even you know even if you are, if you're playing green, there's so many counter spells in this format. You can yeah. just really you could really get people. Uh, this pick I am very excited for. I'm curious if he's going to go into Arbor now because. Mm-hmm. Okay, Cradle. That's a good one. Mason picks up Cradle, so we're going to yeah. see some some uh, creatures here. Yeah, I uh, I was curious if he was going to go for Arbor because he knows Alec is competing for lands over there. Yes. And yes. if Alec does end up with Crucible, having a recursive, even just a blocker like a Dryad Arbor yes. is really good for him. Absolutely. I, I would expect to see... Um, with Mason putting a little pressure on the green and the lands here, I might expect to see Alec crack a little bit and pick up the Crucible here. Yeah. I don't think that would be wrong, right? No, not necessarily. I, I don't think that's wrong at all, because it, it is something, too, where, you know, it's just a good... You, you have someone who is in an artifact-based deck with a fetch land, uh, who's probably going to go for some of the utility lands, yes. like Mystic Sanctuary, stuff like that. So not only do you have now Mason pressuring lands, you also have the potential that Andrew could end up with a Crucible, mm-hmm. just because he has, all right, these are some really good value lands that I can have, not to mention Crucible can be a threat in the Tazeret deck. Yes, yes, indeed, it really can. Dan picking up Muddle the Mixture here. I like this card a lot. So right now we can tutor for Grim Monolith, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Hall Breacher 2 or 3? Hall Breacher 3. 3, so that's what I thought. Yeah. The only target right now for that tutor is Grim Monolith. Now, Muddle the Mixture plays solid double duty as, like, bad negate. It does. But uh, but I think Muddle, Muddle tells me that Dan is... Dan's doing something we don't understand yet. Yeah. Right? It's it's also interesting because it's the only control piece he has. Yeah, and I think I think we're more likely to see that as uh, as a as a transmute here. Misstep out of Brandon. Okay. Okay. All right. And Noble out of Alex. So being a little bit more disciplined, I would expect him either this pick or if it comes back. Oh, Birds of Paradise. So right. Alex sees that Gaia's Cradle pick, right? Yeah. And he says, "I got to take my birds now. I need yep. to take my." Oh, and there's a lot of there's just a lot of booing. There's yeah, a lot of booing there's a lot of outside. booing in the next room because Noble and Birds are gone, and the yep. Cradle player, I bet, is mad. Is, is, it, is it also <laughs> possible that we're uh, that we're booing Alec for taking Noble and then Birds instead of the other uh, instead of the other way around? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. And yeah, that's a good point. I'm hearing. I just heard the word ignoble come from the other room, so I'm guessing. Uh, uh, there, there might be a little bit of regret for Alan yeah. not picking up our new, our Egg new noble friend, yeah, who is one of the cutest little guys Love I've seen in friend. a long time. Uh, yeah, we do have another one. I think there may be some discussion here. We'll see. I always love the goblins, the Lorwyn goblins that have like toads or snails on their shoulder. Yeah, they're those great. Are my those, those are the best. Lorwyn was such a good play. Oh, I miss Lorwyn. Yeah, yeah. Ornithopy of Paradise is another one. I, Orn- I think. Yeah, Ornith- Ornithopter of Paradise yeah. playing, playing the role of, of weird flying utopia tree. Right. Anything could happen in this format. Yeah. 
Yeah, Pearl, yeah, Pearl and Noble are wild picks for sure. Yeah, there's, that's interesting. How dare you question her nobility? What is what is uh, what is Alec doing that he wants white mana for? Yeah, I. It's going to be interesting to see what the end is. There is he maybe going in on a scroll tax plan later. Mm. That's the only thing I can think of. But scroll tax with Sylvan Library is not good. Um, VRD is. Yeah, it's not very good. Yeah, d d it's Death a Ride. sideboard card. Death Ride is a is a solid sideboard card. Um, it's I've seen it played in decks that have gotten the lion's share of fetch lands, but otherwise yeah, it doesn't really show up very it. much. And a get probe from Brandon there, so now we're going for free spells. Brandon looking for that uh, for that free draw there and that perfect information. Yes, yes. Sasa's yes. Oracle. Yeah, there we go. Model for now Sasa's we Oracle. know that is. Okay, so this is... No, Strip Mine still has not been picked. Uh, so, interesting now that we may have a potential... I mean, I guess he can't go Doomsday at this point. He doesn't have... Yeah, we're not There's no other. Black. So, it's it's just wheels into Oracle into Lab Man. Right, yep. That is that is great. I am super excited to see that. Yeah, we, we were going to see an Oracle and a Lab Man at some point. Yeah. Very excited to see Dan going for that. Uh, and especially with Joe going for the Dragon's Rage Channeler here. I oh, Leovold. There we go. Some Someone had to get it eventually. So, so I Mason love this card. with the black cards and the Tropical Island shows us that not Leovold's operative, but of course Leovold Emissary yeah. of Crest, the real one. So also looking to shut down some wheel effects there. and It looks like something up Mason's... Oh. Okay, that got... Yep. Something, yeah, that just got erased. That was the cradle. Something got erased by AB. It was cradle, of course. Yeah. And then abrupt decay out of Steven. Ah, so Steven. now... Steven started typing in Mason's spot. Yeah. And now we are getting our disruption package, our, or sorry, our removal package Ooh. out of Steve Force of Vigor. Interesting. It looks like Joe sees all these artifact combo decks and wants to get something... To deal with them. Twitch.tv slash yeah. <laughs> yes. get out of that... here. You can't, you can't watch this while you draft. Go home. <laughs> yeah, I agree, hyphenated. It's one of the better combos, I think, in the format. Uh, it is a little bit more color intensive. Yes, indeed. Uh, counter spell. Counter spell picked up by Andrew. This is about time for that. Yeah. What are we in round 10, round 11, somewhere? Yeah. Yeah. So, now, interestingly, we don't. Although, I don't know who else would take Tezzeret besides Andrew at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I don't know that he necessarily has the urgency here. No, he doesn't. Although, we may see some people try to cut off some hate draft a little bit earlier this time. I'm basing that just on how early the land run started. Yeah, and the, the interesting thing about hate drafting in this format is that, you know, if you're playing an eight-player draft in your local game store, right, you play three rounds, you play three people, you are unlikely to see the card that you would be hate drafting. But here, it's round robin. You yep. play everyone. Yep. And so there's there's a little more incentive, but this early spending a pick to hate something out, I'd be I'd be shocked. Uh, can we turn on the drafter cam too? Let's Ooh, see. Yes, it's probably just hidden right now. Draft area camera. Draft area Overlay. camera. Where, where is it? Unlock. Uh oh. oh. Okay, hang on. We're trying. We're working on it. It might just be behind the overlay. It's on. It's just, and it's here. It's just blank. Uh oh. We're professionals, I promise. Okay. Well, sorry guys. It's broken. Next right time. Now. Maybe during the break we'll get it fixed. Yes, uh, which our first break is at round 15. So we're right? coming up. Yeah, we're coming yeah. up pretty soon on that. So, hey, chat, if there is somebody you'd like to talk to, what we do during the breaks is we bring one of the drafters right here into the booth, and uh, one of us will talk to them about their deck. So it's time to start voting on who you'd like to see.
So let us know who you're interested in talking to and uh, what questions you might like us to ask them. What do you need white mana for, Alec? In uh, Tomb, are we going Reanimator then? Yes, yep, Entomb there we are. Brand. Yes, there it is. Okay, we've got it now. We've got our Reanimator drafter, and I think John Ryan is in the right here, leaning toward uh, Reanimator over Storm. What do you think about that? I think so as well. Uh, you know, Time Twister is one of your most powerful enablers. You're out that. You're out Git Probe. Um, you you have a lot of counter magic out there, and you have none. So I think it's very easy at this point for ha yeah it, i i am here uh so i think it's very easy at this point for you to get hated out of storm yeah. and i think that reanimator because we don't have you know obviously void walker is going to be a bad matchup for you if he only has ooh collector oof out of joe i like that a lot That's right a great here pick. yeah let's get one of the chicago folks in the booth i agree yeah now we do take multiple breaks throughout and we'll have other people in here commentating throughout as well. Ha! Steven picks up the Ignoble. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I keep waiting to see Alec take Strip Crucible I, the yeah, turn. I, he needs to. It is such a powerful play in this format, and it is such an easy way to just hate someone out of the format completely. Yep. Um, interesting thought here. Does John Ryan take Bazaar? Ooh, that's interesting. I think we might. It, it 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 sort of depends. Oh, okay. once upon a time. Okay. Once upon a time. One of one of my lotus petal out of Mr. Zelensky there. Okay, so yeah, Dan looking to go off pretty early. Going to find some way yeah. to mill out his library here. What if he Demonic and Brandon are both on mill? Well, Dan's gonna. Yeah. Well, if he's self milling, self -mill, and yeah. milling, that's gonna be interesting. Yeah. I think that might come down to what cards like Tasha's City and Slasher get, yeah. right? <laughs> because if I hit your Lab Man and your Oracle... Then you're done. What do you do? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like Strip for sure. And Alec, Alec has done these before, so yeah. I feel like he knows he's getting to the point where Strip needs to... Ooh, a Yogg will out of Brandon. Ooh, that's is, interesting. Is he pivoting? He might be pivoting. Huh. Ooh. Yeah. That's true. You can still play uh, four mana Jace. Yeah. One, one blue, blue, blue Jace. Yeah. It's a little tougher. It's a yeah. little tougher than the other. It's it's, it's smaller bit. cousins. Yeah, Alec will likely pick up Strip Mine here. There is there is a little leverage on Crucible because there is also Ram and F Excavator, right? And yeah. There's, you know, not a lot of bolts flying around today. You know, Savannah. Savannah. Okay, so yet again, picking the white mana. Alec wants that white mana, but we still don't know why. Yeah. I'm excited to find out, but I definitely think we should hear from one of the Chicago players. Yeah. So who who do we want then from the Chicago? Do we want Andrew with Tinker Time Vault, or do we want Mason with what looks like Bug Control? Loris. Loris of the Dream Den. Okay. Loris of the Dream Den coming in. So this is the other two. Very, two white mana spell. Very impactful companion here, right? Um, the two the two big companions have been picked. Luris, uh, once banned in Vintage, then unbanned after the change to the uh, companion rules. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we want to get Mason yeah, here. Yeah, I agree. I, I want to hear Green Sun Zenith. We'll what probably, we've got. I will probably get Andrew in here after the second break, right? Yeah. Like, let's, let's hear from them. Yeah, let's hear from them. They came all the way from Chicago. Yeah. Let's, let's talk to them about their decks. Please. No, it'll, it'll be... I'm excited for those conversations, for sure. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Luris does mean no Crucible and no Ramen Up. Luris changes the math here, but Luris is LED. very interesting. Dan, Out of Dan. Dan looking for what I assume is is some LED Infernal Tutor shenanigans. Yeah. What if Mason's on the same... What if we're going Witherbloom from Mason? Ooh, Deathrite Shaman. Mason may very well be competing for that Witherbloom combo, but Steven already having the uh, Douthy Voidwalker gives yeah. him a little leverage there. He's got the two tutors. He's got Demonic and Imperial Steel. True, yeah. Oh, Assassin's Trophy. All right, so we're, we're going the bug route as well. I, I think it's interesting that the two b bug players mm. are right next to each other, but largely have not cut each other off from anything. Right, they're just sort of trading. Mason has some of the land, right, and uh, and, and once upon a time. But uh, Steven, Steven, of course, with the, uh, the removal spells here, yeah. Taiga for Joe. So we're going rug, it seems like. Yes, Let's... Alex definitely going to miss that Ren and Six. Yeah. Yeah, I think Steven is uh, is likely to 
to to be just just enough off of what Mason is doing that yeah. they're both going to get reasonable decks. Yeah, sorry. His uh, he he does not have blue, but right. in one of the lists that he showed us prior to the event, he did have a little bit of blue in there. Yes. So there's a sleight of hand then out of Andrew, uh, which so now we have, you know, a lot of those one mana cantripping storm enablers kind of all over the place. Preordain, so ponder, get probe, slight, all gone. Yeah. We still have uh, opt. Preordain was taken in five by John Ryan. Yes. Or six, sorry, it was taken in six. Yeah, preordain is gone. Uh, yeah, I do. I do expect. Um, I do expect Brandon to pick up that that flashback wheel. What is that card called? It's from the first Modern Horizons. Yeah. Why can't I remember what it's, it's the called? The three mana, and then it flashes back for six. Six. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna bother me. Um, Echo of Aeons. Yes, Thank that's you. the Echo one. Echo of Aeons. Yes. We did it. Yep. Thanks, chat. Appreciate Woo! you looking out. Uh, Twitch yeah. chat. <laughs> Twitch chat, getting the answer right. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Cost three in the bin, combos with combos LED. Combos with LED, True. it's yeah. a fantastic, yeah, fantastic seven, pick it's up, especially with that hull breacher. Six and three, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, especially hull breacher is incredibly powerful with that. Yeah, I agree. I am a little bit surprised to see sleight of hand over serum visions. but I am as well. They're, they're a little different. Sleight of hand, you know, sleight of hand gives you a little little more uh, choice now at the cost of the value later. Thanks for the follow, Matt. Appreciate you. That's the notorious MDT. Uh, so what do you think John takes here? Do we get a target or something? I think that... Oh, Darian, thanks for the follow. Yeah, appreciate that, Darian. I Why aren't you following already? I think we're not likely to see another target yet from John Ryan. Yeah. He doesn't need to. He's no, got he's got the best brand, one. The best one we're more likely to see. Thanks, Lena. Appreciate the follow. I think we'll see some type of enabler here, maybe the double entomb mm. out of Modern Horizons 2, but I also think he's not really pressured on that. No. Because he doesn't have anyone that he's competing with. Yeah, he doesn't, you know? he doesn't need to take Unmarked Grave here. He doesn't need to take uh, anything like that yet. Yeah, Expressive Iteration is, I think, going to be a very powerful card for either... Yeah, definitely for Dan. What a card. Yeah. Just what an amazing card. You get two cards. You get yeah. two cards for your two-mana card. It's yeah. unbelievable. That's probably the best cantrip printed in years. Yeah, it's unreal. I mean, I, I can't think of one that competes, although, you know, cantrip design has kind of taken a break lately. Every time I cast that card on Arena, I'm just like, I feel like I'm getting away with something. I yeah. turn, I turn, turn three, I, I tap my two lands, cast Expressive Iteration, I play another land, and then I, you know... I, it's I, over. And this, I'm just like, I'm so far ahead. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, I'm casting Goldspan Dragon into Goldspan Dragon into, like, Chain Alleran's Epiphany, because I'm a yeah. terrible person. Yeah. Hey, you said it, not me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so... Important. It's important to know. It, it, it is. Know I, I agree with that. So, John here, then, doesn't really... I mean, we don't have a whole lot of protection left in terms of free protection, which is... Does he go for defense grid soon? I feel like him or Steven. Or Mason. Or Mason. I There's so many people here that I think benefit from defense grid. Yeah, there's a lot of players that really want to stop their opponents from interacting instant speed on their turn here. Yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. Because now Andrew, Andrew has to ferry, mm -hmm. so we don't really need much else. Um, Thought Monitor is an amazing cantrip. Gosh, that card is so good. I, I have you seen? I assume you've seen the affinity builds that uh, oh, the yes. Neoform Thought Monitor and Oh of. yes, those, those are, are amazing. Uh, it turns out robots can't be stopped even without Mox Opal. Yeah. So thanks, robots. Uh, yeah, it's it's fun, and I love how innovative the format has been lately yeah. because it's. You know, it's kind of like when you look at Legacy over the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. All the innovation happens online because it's so quick, because you can just use mana traders to audible into something else. Although, and recently, it's been a little harder to use mana traders in card order. It has, unfortunately. It's been a little rougher. Uh, but now seeing that fly through in other formats has been amazing, and I love how quickly things are evolving, especially with a set like Modern Horizons 2 oh, coming yeah. out that... I don't want to get ahead of myself here because Urza Saga exists in that, and so Gosh. does Ragavan, which I'm surprised. Do you think we see Ragavan soon out of hmm. Joe? Possibly. Possibly. I don't, but I don't think anybody else wants it, right? Yeah. So Joe could take Ragavan like 38th and be fine if he wants it. 
Is he the only... He Are he and Dan the only red players right now? Yes. They are. Yes, the only committed wow. red players at the moment. And neither of them are competing for the same cards, really, at this point. We're past... You know, like Mana Drain, Force of Will, like that stuff, obviously, they're going to compete over. Right. But I feel like at this point, you know, with Thassa's Oracle, Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond, Daniel's, you know, Dan's, Dan's showing his hand here. Yeah. And He's saying, this is what I'm in on. And they'll collide again for the second and third tier lands. They'll collide yeah. again for the sideboard cards. But <coughs> until pick 30 or so. Yeah, they'll probably be, you know, in their own lanes, not having to worry a whole lot about what people are going to pick. Yeah, that's true. Aside from Ruby, he hasn't signaled red, and Ruby may have literally just been best pick available, because at that point, you've got Ruby and Emerald as your two Moxen, yep. and those are probably way more beneficial for you, because, I mean, Twister tends to go like 3-4 sometimes, Yeah, my as bet high is, as 2, as low as 4, I feel like. My bet is we'll see some red out of Dan in the form of some wheel effects, right? Yeah. I, I think wheel, we may see, you know, I don't know... What else would we even see out of that besides wheel? Mm. Maybe a bolt. Maybe a Pe bolt. removal stuff like that. Removal, because sideboard cards. Yeah. You know, just just some of the the old nasty hate cards. You know. Yeah. Shame he's not in black, so he can't get Notion Thief as well, and just really double down on the. Yeah. We're we're just gonna go for it. Yeah, Reb Pyro stuff like that. We missed a ton of picks. Oh no. I'm oh refreshing. no. I'm refreshing. Oh no. What happened? Why? Everything is terrible. Okay. Doesn't want to. What is going on? No. Okay. I'm I'm trying to reload the tab. Nope. Okay. I'm just gonna click Mark's link. There we go. Not working. Ah. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, I think True Name has gotten worse. Honestly, True Name used to be not just one of the best creatures in VRD, um, because I feel like. Oh, yep, there we go. Oh, my. All right, okay, so great. Wow. we had Steam Vents Pyroblast, so we have protection there. Then we had Breeding Pool, Red Blast, Chains and Bitter Blossom out yes. of, this, out I of saw, Steven. I saw Chains on Steven's list. I was yeah. so excited about it. All right, so we have SDT. We have Allosaurus Shepherd out of Alec. Yes, Allosaurus Shepherd. Let's pull is that, that up. I thought that was more than two. That is a... That is, um, the uh, Allosaurus Rider is the one you're thinking about. Oh, Allosaurus right. Shepherd yeah, yeah. Yeah, Shepherd is the jump start. Yep, uh, you're right. Uh, and now we have the second tier of fetches, and we have Dan on Tolarian Academy, which is always one of my favorite picks in this format. Oh, I love a Tolarian and he, Academy. Yeah. And he did end up with Remand as well. So he does have some tempo there. Um, and yeah, it looks like we have another red ish drafter, Chrome Mox. I feel like that has to go to the Reanimator player. Most definitely, most definitely. Opt, all right. And Arid Mesa. Cavern so, of Souls, very interesting from Mason, yeah. Do we have any fetches left? I feel like we're all gone. We're either all done or close to done with fetches. Yeah. I haven't counted yet. Uh, and yeah, Cavern of Souls, I feel like, is probably the best utility land Mason can possibly have. because oh, it, certainly. It seems like he's on a bug mid-range plan. Yeah. Which... I hope and pray means we get a Grim Flayer. I love that card. I love Grim Flayer. Yeah, just trying to force through something like a Leovold without it, any... Uh, especially with wheel effects, as many powerful draw spells as oh, you yeah. have in this format. Uh, I think that's very, very important. Yeah, being able to lock somebody like Dan out of their, 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 yeah. good, their goodies or Brandon out of their goodies is, is going to be really important. Uh, interesting that Dan went for Academy, because I feel like Andrew could have benefited from that. Do you think that means he may be competing now for Tezzeret? It's possible, although I think it's not super likely, because he doesn't have a single, like a, a, yeah. a defining oh, I guess artifact it's, he wants to tutor for. Yeah, it's Grim Monolith and everything else is... Everything else yeah. is just filling the room. Ooh, <coughs> grief. All right. Steven nearly killed me with his grief pick. <laughs> I'm allergic to the card Grief, apparently. I love this card. What a card. I'm, so, I play Living End in Modern, so I love Grief. Oh, yeah, of grief course. Is, grief is a, a yeah. great card for me, and I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, kind of unmasked Senior here in uh, in creature form. Yeah, uh, and there there is finally the Dryad Arbor. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have that now, and it looks like Mason is just building 
legacy. Yeah. Almost. Mason, Mason is building a, a bug disruption deck. Green Sun Zenith getting Dryad Arbor, just looking to shore that up. Fair magic with power. Yep. Yeah. I, I guess that's a thing. Urza next for Dan. I think we... It'll be interesting. We may see it. We have not yet seen uh, Urza Lord High Artificer. That's no. true. And that so, I've seen that go pretty like surprisingly high. Like I've yeah. seen it go too high. Yeah. Time spiral. There we go. All right. Now the Academy pick makes Good a whole pick, uh, lot of sense. It's Combo Winter in Dan Zelinsky's house. It here. is. I loved Combo Winter. Oh my gosh, what a good time. It was. better than, A better winter than Eldrazi winter. Oh, significantly. <laughs> significantly. Yeah, uh, white does not get a lot of love in this format. I it's, it's it's always interesting because there are a lot of like individually powerful cards. Mm -hmm. There's just not a lot of synergies there. And here, you know, of course, we have our Shockland run, which kicked off with... Uh, breeding pool. Oh yeah. Or was it overgrown? I think too? it was overgrown. Was it? Uh, it's somewhere in there. Yeah. What was worse, yet again? Eldrazi non winter or Hogak summer? Hogak summer. I no, agree, I... and not just because I head judged that <laughs> mythic champion. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay, here's my chance to head judge this event. Oh, okay, I get to watch the same deck all weekend. Awesome. Great. I think the worst part about Hogak summer was everyone knew it was going to be over soon. Yeah. And everyone was just like trudging through it. Like, I hate that I have to do this. Yeah, it was very, but very I have to, to do this to Oko time. Yeah, it was. Uh, Oko is broco, which man, blue green had a real good run there for about a year and a half. It sure did. And then, uh, in this set, it was, uh, in, in AFR, it's it's been... I mean, those are the two worst colors in Limited. Yeah. Oh, by far. Burn with the Grave. Yeah. Yep. And Walking Ballista for Alec. Interesting. Oh, okay. okay. So, are we going Devoted Druid? We might we might see a uh, a, a, a green-white combo deck a la the, uh, the, the ones that exist in Modern. That's the deck Alec plays in Modern. Oh, he plays Heliod combo. He does, okay. interestingly enough. Uh, so maybe that is what he's going for here. All right. Well, why don't I step out and uh, and grab Mason and sure. you can chat with him about his deck? Sounds good. All right. We'll take a quick break here, and we will be right back. Uh, I guess we don't have a break screen. We just have streaming. Nah, streaming coming. Okay. All right. We'll be back, guys. Give us like two minutes. This computer is slow.
are back. This is not Eric. This is Mason. Yes, so, it is. What's up? As was said in chat, GP Madison champion. Congrats on that. What Thank was that God. like? That was a few. That was quite a few years ago. That was like, yeah. God. That was. I was actually. I think when I won SCG Madison, it was back when there were one day events, and I think I was the youngest uh, uh -huh, SCG okay. winner. How old were time. you? I was like sixteen. Oh, was like pretty wow. freshly sixteen. Good I had accomplishment. Just gotten my ability to drive, and I remember uh, when I made day two on Sunday, I had to work that day. Oh, like, no. At McDonald's. And so yeah. I literally called my boss and was like, I will quit if you make me come into work today <laughs> because I'm playing this top eight. Like, there's no chance I'm yeah. not competing. And then I wound up winning the whole thing. I actually beat Andrew Tenjum oh, in nice. finals, and it was his first SCG. It was my first SCG. It was his first SCG. Oh, that's incredible. It was really cool. So, lots of fun So, there. your deck, are, are, you, are you drafting Legacy Bug? So not exactly. So, <laughs> don't 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 so, give anything away. I'm I'm just curious because there've been some really okay, really good. interesting choices here. Uh, the cradle mm -hmm. was yeah. was that a pressure pick? A little bit, yeah. So okay. some of the guys are doing really weird stuff now. Yeah. I mean, like this is a whole new group of people. Obviously, I've never uh, VRD yeah. these guys before, and I wasn't really sure where their evaluate like where their prioritization was going to come in. Yeah. Some of it has been. I think abjectly bad. Some of their picks are like <laughs> fucking bonkers. But they, they all seem to think that it's pretty justifiable. Yeah, you know yeah. What? Okay, fine. Everyone thinks their picks are justifiable. Right. That's just facts. Right. If we live in a world where you can have Tolarian Academy and Opt go in the same round. Yeah. Which is just... Mind-boggling. Insane, right? Yeah. So some of the cards, you know, I'm not competing for blue cards this time around. Which Fair I think point, is very much to your benefit because there's a lot of blue. There's, there's always there's, a lot of blue at this VRD. Right. And fortunately, blue is a deep enough color where I've been, you know, three people in a row all playing blue, and we just pick blue cards 20 cards down, you know, and yeah. it, it happens. The, the card pool is definitely deep enough. Right now, I feel like a lot of us are fighting over black cards, or at least did in the first 15 picks. Yeah. Um, which is interesting because homeboy to my left, whatever, pick four, uh, the guy who picked all black cards right Steven. now. Steven, yeah. Steven, sorry. I'm trying to learn everyone. No, no, you're good. Um, he picked nothing but black cards, and then the first... Outside of that, he did was Veil of Summer, and I'm like, yeah, like bro, come yeah, on. like that's that's where you're gonna try to like flex into. That's yeah, a lot, but um, I have a but. Well, okay, so my most successful VRD strategy in the past has always been to pick black discard spells very highly, mm -hmm. and then flex them into a bunch of different strategies, whether that's like yeah. affinity. Um, some kind of a tribal aggro deck, some kind of a birthing pod deck, all these different things you can do off of that sort of black start yeah. pick all the discard spells. And this is actually one of the first times I've ever uh, VRD'd where other people seemingly prioritized those black spells as highly as I did. Yeah. Which is interesting. Uh, and I think it's good. I think that pe the fact that people are picking, you know, Duress and him to track and stuff like that, that's that's good. Like, that, yeah. those are quality decisions. I, I... I think it's important in those first 10 picks to just pick generically powerful cards right. that are easily splashable before you get hated out. Because especially in a snake draft, mm -hmm. it's real easy to just like, well, if I'm picking first overall, I'm going to lose out on a lot by the time it swings back to me. So I need to get generically powerful stuff. Absolutely. Like, it's not hard to like, some, you know, you pick a, a spell... The guy next to you picks a fetch land, and then all the fetch lands are gone by the time it makes it back to you, or all the fetch lands of your color. You know, like all the blue yeah. fetch lands. I, so it's the snake draft definitely. There's 15 cards gone in between two of your picks. It's yeah. crazy. So, uh, you know, that definitely adds a weird dynamic. So the the guy's cradle, it was definitely mm -hmm. a pressure pick because I do not know what C8 is doing. I think he yeah. picked a bunch of just not random very good cards. Yeah. At this point. <laughs> I can kind of I. So I almost think I can kind of see where he's trying to go with some of the stuff. Yeah. But I think he's just, well, I think he's I, I, picking his cards. I think he's. Yeah. Not, I, 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 I do you think he's picking too early, or? Well, I think I think for the most part, guys are picking things too early. Yeah. Um, and letting I, some of their stuff get hated out. He was talking about like, well, I only needed you know my first few picks, and he picked a lot of lands, which is fair. Yeah. Lands are good. Yeah. Um, and he definitely he definitely sniped a bunch of the lands that I wanted. He definitely sniped a bunch of the lands that other people wanted. Yeah. Totally fair. But when you're doing stuff like picking. Mox Pearl and Fast Bond. That was such a mind-boggling pick to me. Open. Yeah. And then you're not drafting other white cards, so yeah. what is the point? I, I'm yeah. wondering, because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of people in white, so I'm wondering when someone will splash white mm. yeah, at this white point. Yeah, white and red, just untouched. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, 
which typically in our past VRDs at this point, someone would have audibled into those, mm -hmm. seeing right. like, oh man, there's like nobody in red. Like I think Dragon Rage Channeler is and Ren and Six uh, and, and Lutri, so, yeah, there's one guy which I guess like, if you uh, count that, Dak Faden and, yeah, and, and a couple other things. Which his deck looks nice. He's yeah, got some nice cards going on. Though uh, the fact that C8 might take some of his cards with like the fast bond you know, yeah have excavator, that kind of thing it could be a little awkward uh, I mean, well I, I think it's interesting though because Lurus kind of forecasts what he can pick I don't I can't imagine he's going to try to play it as a companion I, yeah. I have to imagine okay. he's trying to play it in his deck in his deck instead um because he's got to be planning on going hard or white. I mean, there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. I also think in the eighth seed. I mean, okay. So I've heard that fast bond's pretty popular amongst a lot of these guys. Yeah. So this this VRD is bond, a lot of fast bond. You've got to get it one or two, or it's which gone. you know, in my experience, seems a little high on the priority list. Yeah. But like time vault, if you want to play a fast bond, there's no other replacement for it. You have. Uh, to yeah. You fast you have bond, to get so. it, which is why you see time vault goes second overall. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. I would. What I would have assumed is that in the sort of uh, six, seven, eight seats, mm -hmm. you would have seen someone with both Ruby and Pearl, and then they would have been drafting that sort of like aggro disruptive strategy. Yeah. Um, and the fact that that didn't happen, you know, obviously in the last couple of years, the VRD meta overall, yeah. I believe, has sort of sh Let's downshifted play. the Moxen a little further down the line. So yeah. In, so, like, as Sol Ring and Mana Crypt have gotten inherently more valuable, I think some of the colored mocks, and especially some of the premium colored mocks, black, green, blue, have sort of started to downshift. So I think it's very regular that in the 7th and 8th seat you get double mocks in, uh, which yeah. I think didn't used to happen. Now it happens a lot more. Uh, and in the 7th and 8th seat, I think you're, you can take... I mean, in this situation, I was able to get what I would consider two premium mocks, which is outrageous. Yeah, I, I was surprised, and it, it's like... You weren't super stoked to get the seat you did, but I think it worked out for you pretty well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I so I have seen a couple of the lists um, from some of these guys, or, or from some of the other yeah. drafts that you guys have hosted, and I know that some of the some of the sometimes things get kicked down the road pretty yeah. far. So I wasn't actually really too grim on the fifth seat. I mean, people were talking about like, I got if I got second pick, I'd think about just picking eight, and it's like, what? What kind of logic is that? Yeah, I'd, I'd much rather pick, like, the four or five oh than to pick eight, because the the power level between, like, you know, your power at eight, your power level at eighth overall and your power level at fourth or fifth mm -hmm. may not seem huge in that individual pick, but down the line, you get so many more impactful cards at that four to five than you necessarily would at the eight, I feel like. Absolutely. Like, I... I it's almost insane to me that anyone would look at the second seat where they could take Ancestral Recall and think to themselves, well, getting both my picks back to back is way more valuable. Like, like the fact that I can pick Painter's, Painter Servant Grindstone is way more valuable than just abjectly getting better cards, like, earlier and often. It, yeah, and uh, I... Just completely crazy. Mostly because, like, there's no room to really hate draft anything in these picks. Like, I, no. the moment you decide, like, someone takes uh, yada yada Painter Servant, yeah. and someone else decides, oh, I'll take Grindstone to hate him out, well, congratulations, you're missing out on, like, blue cantrips, or green fetch lands. Yeah. You're missing out on artifact mana. Right now, I think this is maybe the most open and sort of flexible that I've ever seen a, a whole table of people be. Yeah. Because for the most part, everyone is kind of sticking to that strategy of taking a lot of flexible sort mm -hmm. of uh, cards, and they're not locking them. No one's really, I think, tilting their hand too much as far as, like, this is what I'm going to do, right? Uh, see, what is like, it? One, two, three. They're all like, well, I could be Splinter Twin. Yeah, yeah I, I might say. not be, yeah. Um, you know. Maybe eight. I'm on Thassa's Oracle. Right, yeah, But yeah, I yeah. also have Tolarian Academy. Mm -hmm. I actually think... Um, Daniel. Daniel's draft has been really smart so far. Yeah. Brandon picked Narset way too early, I, yeah. and other people were defending that pick to me out there, and I think they're all fucking crazy. Narset <laughs> would be like the fourth Planeswalker I would probably yeah. take, but you've got Three Fairy, you've got Oko. Yep. I would probably take Oko Narset. went so late. Our, some of the cards went just wildly later yeah. than I think they have any right to. I mean, some of the cards... So, like, 
cards that went too early that are just completely insane. It's like, you should never pick Imperial Seal that early. You should never pick Narset that early. Yeah. That's not where you should pick Brainstorm. You should pick Force of Will over Mana Drain. Whatever. All that stuff is, like, yeah. contextual, I guess. You know, it depends on what you think other people are going to snipe. Yeah. I got fucking bodied. I'll give this one away. <laughs> I got fucking bodied. This dude picked Allosaurus Shepherd. Yeah, Why I saw that. ever yeah. pick that? Yep. Not only... Okay, what... All right. I don't know what he's planning on doing, but he's a fucking crazy person. One, that's not even a unique effect. There's, like, four yeah. different Allosaurus Shepherds. Yeah. There's, like, that, that Herald, was... and there's Vexing Shusher. That was one of the effects. reasons I thought maybe he is companioning the risk, because he picked that Allosaurus Shepherd there. And that's that's clearly what you're going for. You're trying to get those cards. I at this point, I would say my most likely deck is that I think I'm gonna be elves. I think yeah. I think I'm gonna be like I, green splash Leovald splash yeah. spells and go with elves. I've had a lot of success with that strategy in the past. Uh, Cabal Therapy is still up. Oh, yeah. Uh, the the fact pick. that Cabal Therapy is still up is um, actually kind of surprising because that's usually a ten like top 10 round pick for us. Really? Yeah. That's it's interesting. Uh, but, but we also almost always have someone go Reanimator super early, mm -hmm. and we have someone, okay. which, I mean, we didn't even get Reanimator until, you know, Seat 1 took Entomb in, like, round 10. Mm, and that's, okay. you know, there's been a couple VRDs where we've had Entomb go as early as, like, five or six, which is super early. It is. But it's one of those things that, like you said, there's no replacement for. It. Right. And it's, it, it's um you know, there's a lot of different ways you can evaluate cards, but one of them is, is you know, is this card replaceable? Fine. Is this card the best thing at doing what it does? And it's like, okay, sure, Buried Alive exists, but it costs three mana to sorcery. Entomb is... Definitely the best card in its category of cards. If you want to draft your animator, you should draft him too. Yeah, so you should always draft him too. Cabal Therapy, I think, is such a specific card because you need yeah. cheap creatures on the field to make mm -hmm. it work. I draft it when I draft tribal black yeah. disruption decks, like uh, decks that have black disruption and like tribal creature decks. Yeah. Or if I'm drafting maybe like a red black pyromancer deck, if I'm taking you know Sedgemore Witch and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and, and picking up a lot of like, these little tokens. Can I address the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Hyphenated said, I think carrying yeah. about seat more is more about double mox than it is about painter servant. Yeah, bro, but you can get double mox in seats four and five. <laughs> yeah, <apparently>. somehow. So, <laughs> and you can get way better mox in seat four and five. Like, there is a huge difference, in my opinion, I suppose, uh, between like mox sapphire and mox pearl. The fact that this guy took mox pearl outside of, instead of mox emerald. Like, yeah, is to go with is mind boggling. Bond, and yes, we are oh, good to go. You ready to get back to it? Oh, I am very ready to get back All to right. it. All right. These guys do not know what's coming for them. I, I can't wait to see what you do the rest of the round. Well, thanks. I am super stoked. Yeah, thanks for coming out. Appreciate yeah. it. Seriously. All right. We will be right back. Give us a couple minutes to take a break. And it'll be Eric and I here for some more commentary. There we go. Okay. All right. Oh, we're muted. Wait, no, we're not. Oh, yep. It's because he does that all the time. Because I forget to pull it down. Of course. All right. So there's the draft area. So who we can see there in the pink hoodie in the middle on the right is Alec. Uh, directly under him is John Ryan, for those of you following along. We have Steven in the top left over there. I believe that is that uh, is that Dan all the way in the back? That, that Dan is shirt? Dan all the way in the back, I believe so, yes. And then we have Mason in the top right with just the green shirt. All Which right. means, all right, it looks like we are off to the races now, ready to start again. Look at this. We're coming back. So how was your chat with Mason? Uh, so it was great. He he <laughs> he did have some questions about what Alec was doing and why he took Mox Pearl over Mox Emerald there. I talked to Alec about that, actually. Okay. So what happened was Alec was, you know, going through his list of cards, marking things off that had already been picked. 
he marked off the wrong mox. So he accidentally crossed off Emerald, and he said, okay, well, Emerald's gone. I'll take Pearl. Okay. And then when he took Fast Spawn, the room was like, hey, what? Uh, oops, right? Yeah. And that's when he found out Emerald hadn't gone yet. Ah, uh, okay. So just, you know, easy mistake to make. Yeah, it's, it is you know, for nine sure. In the morning. Yeah. Uh, I talked to a couple people out there. Uh, Andrew seemed pretty happy with his deck so far. Yep. Pretty much said, like, so I've got Time Vault, and I've got a bunch of, you know, good blue interactive cards. Mm -hmm. I don't really, I'm not really under pressure to do anything. And he also mentioned that he's the only blue-white drafter, so he can float Dovin's Veto pretty late. And That's that true. Uh, Mason actually touched on, he said this is probably the most open he's seen a VRD this late, because everyone is on the generic powerful stuff strategy. Yep. And he highlighted that his strategy is basically, I want to draft cheap, splashable, black disruption until I'm forced to make a deck. Yes, yes. Because it audibles into everything. Everything can use that. And I, I think that's incredibly true, and I think that's some of the better decks that we see in VRD historically are typically the cheap black disruption decks that's eventually audible into something. Absolutely. A couple other notes from, from out there in the field. Uh, Steven was unhappy to lose the collector oof to Joe. Yeah. Uh, John Ryan did a control F on the board for Flusterstorm and was happy that he saw it had not been picked. Yeah. Uh, Alex asked if, um, what's the card name? Scrubland? Yeah. Her, I mean, that's her, a card name. Yeah. I think he asked if <laughs> Scrubland had been picked and the answer okay. was no. Um, and Brandon was just happy that he'd slept for more than two hours. And, oh, uh, that's a good positive was, too. Was yeah. to come in proper. And it looks like I'm getting the... Does that link mean that we're we're once again experiencing Lagging. the lag? Oh, that's not the one we want this in, though. It doesn't look like... No, we're good. Nope, we're good. Okay, cool. Just good to have. I oh, yeah. the other copies of this. Power ranking of who's in the best spot. Ooh, interesting. So, uh... It's really tough to... <coughs> Really tough to say with everybody so open, right? Yeah. I I think that in terms of people who are going to be hated out of their archetype, um, I, hmm. I mean, Mason doesn't really have one yet. Uh, Andrew's probably not getting hated out. Like you said, he's basically the only blue-white drafter. Yeah. I think Andrew's in a really good spot. Um. Lutri cute little otter baby over every other entry on spreadsheet. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Lutri cute little otter baby. I think Alex in the worst spot. I agree that Alex. Is I don't know what. He, yeah, he's he's. I I think he's going for a walking ballista combo. Yeah, which is going to be I, an interesting needle to thread if he wants to play Loris. Yeah, it is. Um, as a companion, mm -hmm. Mason mm -hmm. said he may just be main decking. That's true. Alec may simply put Luris in his deck directly. Yeah, I I think though that you know one of Alec's favorite decks has always been Devoted Druid. We have a Brain Freeze mm -hmm. for Brandon. Okay, which means we're missing a pick Alec for is, Alec. Alec is typing. But yeah. Alec's not taking. Alec is taking finale. Finale of devastation. Of devastation. Ooh, let's, uh, let's oh. So does this mean Brandon has? N oh no, brain freeze. No, we're we're still milling. We have we have now officially signaled mill. We've what we've done. We've done something very smart here. Is we've split up the thank you. We split up the yeah. mouse on the keyboard for a second. Yeah, that that was not wise. Personal tutor. Alec is using a phone. Alec could use my lap. Does Alec want my laptop? What is happening? Yeah, come on, Alec, get out of here. Oh, he's cold. He's chilly. He's, oh, he's going into his hoodie. Oh, no, he is. Oh no, he's taking it off. Okay. Cabal Therapy. We actually, uh, Mason and I just talked about how Cabal Therapy occasionally at these v at RVRDs goes in round 10 or earlier. Yeah. Uh, he was he was very happy it was still there. So Cabal Therapy, a very strong card in an open deck list format. Uh, yeah, very much so. And Chain of Smog, there we go. Steven steps in and takes the Chain of Smog. Ooh. So, of course, he's going to be going for the Chain of Smog Witherbloom Apprentice combo here. Yeah. Trying to, to go off with that. And pretty secure in the idea that nobody's going to snag his Witherbloom Apprentice before it comes back to him, I think. Yeah, I don't think, you know, is congratulations, you hated me out of a Witherbloom Ancient and, like, a top 20 card in your deck. Right, yeah. So, I mean, I, I feel like even if even if Steven doesn't get it, I'm still pretty happy with that. 
Ah, okay. So let me open up. Uh, yes. Let's, let's. So let's get those cards on the table. Wither Bloom app. So Wither Bloom Apprentice here. Whenever you cast or copy, important. And yes, it's it is. Free spell. You drain your opponent for one, and then Chain of Smog. Of course, an onslaught classic. Uh, so what you do is you target yourself with Chain of Smog, and then you copy the spell for free and choose yourself as the target for the copy. And you can do that an arbitrarily large number of times and drain your opponent for all their life and then some. Yep. It's pretty great. Uh, and is... Yeah. So that plays really well into Steven's uh, two-card Monty strategy, because which is something that he's done before in VRD. Because he's got the uh, the opposition agent or the Doughty Voidwalker rather, which I'm sure will mm -hmm. go with Helm of Obedience oh, as for we sure. mentioned, and he's got Demonic Tutor and Imperial Seal, and you really want the tutors early in order to make good use of that strategy. So now we have Thought Scour and Prismatic End. Yes, oh, I love it. So Thought Scour, obviously, we're going in on the Rug Plan, and Prismatic Ending honestly was one of the cards I was most excited about in Modern Horizons too. Uh, this card's great. I think it's one of the best pieces of removal they've printed in a long time. This card is fantastic. A lot of the really good permanents in this format are very small. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. It's it's one of the best white cards uh, to be printed in quite a while. Yeah, I agree. Flusterstorm and Careful Study oh, for John okay. Ryan. So that, that control F paying off here. Yeah. Uh, careful Study obviously being another one of the more powerful enablers that he has access to in those colors. And, and which I, classic. I, I still think is perfectly fine in modern if you just print that instead of Faithless Looting. Mm -hmm. But, you know, whatever. Yeah, who, well, who you know, Faithless Looting's fine, right? Whatever, everything's okay. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's a, 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 at least... You know, faith, faithless, faithless looting is 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 pretty busted in other formats like it, historic. It, although, oh, for sure. Who knows what historic even is anymore with uh, with randomness with with thirty one cards with abilities like seek and conjure. Yeah. Who even knows anymore? Uh, yeah. It's a good point. Prismatic is an instant with to ferry out brazen borrower. All right. Well, I get that. To, I, get I would have expected. I get to ban someone. Oh, come on. Uh. You can do it. Block? Boom. Block. Yeah, I think it's block, yeah. I should be able to... Oh, there it is. Bant. Oh, yeah. Bant. There we go. Cool. Uh, yeah, I... Dreadhorde Arcanist out of Joe. I think he would have wanted Brazen Borrower, too. Uh, oh, yeah. Good Good point. Is Steven going to take Karn and Lattice even with minimal mana? I think, I think he might. tough, but I think he might do it. I think he takes it late. There's the Wither Bloom Apprentice yep. for Steven. Get there we go. Wants. I really like Dreadhorde Arcanist. When, whenever somebody picks Ancestral Recall... Yeah. I always look for them to take Dreadhorde, yep. or Dreadhorde Arcanist later because it's such a fantastic combination. Yeah. And uh, Joe, although Joe doesn't have Brainstorm, Joe's got Ancestral... Da, da, da. Serum Visions, Thought Scour. Yep. He's, got a, he's got some decent Tier 2 yes. uh, draw spells. He does have Mana Drain and Force of Will, so he's got a good Control Suite as well. So Endurance... Mason's All picking right. up one of my favorite new cards from uh, Modern Yeah, that Rises card is too. great. Uh, there's a lot of graveyard nonsense that goes on in this format. Of course, Joe yep. just picking up that Arcanist. John Ryan, obviously, on the uh, the Entomb plan. And so Endurance mm -hmm. is a really good, cheap way to just clear somebody's graveyard out. Yeah. Fantastic card. And uh, if you happen to actually cast it with mana, it's an okay body, too. Real good. Mana. Yeah. I, I do like that Brandon went for almost a backup plan before he showed his hand, opting for True Name Nemesis yes. over any mill cards. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know... Mana Vault. Wait. No. Nope. I... Hang on. No, you can't. You no. Nope. Mana Vault went. Okay, I was gonna say Mana Vault went in three. Yeah, Dan. I'm sorry. You're you're out of you're out of mana. You're just out. Oh, I'm in view only. Or I'd type nope in the in the. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're going back. We're going back. Can't do that. Not allowed. Yeah, Death Rite. I think maybe you know as as Mason said when he was in here, he's kind of realized he may be in on elves. Mm. Yeah, um, and that makes sense with the cavern, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it uh, those went real late. I'm sure he's. Uh, I'm sure he's disappointed not to have Allosaurus Shepherd in that yeah. case. Mox Opal for damage. There we go. A lot of sense alongside the uh, Academy pick. Yeah, he uh, he said, "quote I got bodied. I got absolutely destroyed by that Allosaurus Shepherd pick." Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Strip Mine is still available. That is that boggles my mind. And Library of Alexandria, which again, yeah. not super powerful, but it should have been gone by fifteen. It, we're in eighteen now. It should have been gone before the break. Ashiok Dream Render. There we go. See it. Yeah. 
that's just a fantastic war of the spark planeswalker shuts down a lot of things that you want to do in this format right mm -hmm. no, no searching no yeah. searching for your opponents and you just get to destroy their graveyard yeah it's pretty good i so now now the gush pick and stuff starts to make sense from brandon mm -hmm. knowing that mm -hmm. we've got ashiok brain freeze stuff like that yeah. vizier of remedies so now we yes. have sh alec has shown this is what i am doing I am going to go Vizier Devoted Druid, probably. I, I'd be shot if you're picking the Vizier here. You're picking the Devoted Druid too, because it's not like anybody else. You know, the only other person who might want this kind of thing would be Steven. Probably. Mason. Mason. It's an true. elf. That's true. So the interesting thing is when Mason was in here, he said, you know, I I hate hate picks this early. Yes. But if Alec doesn't get the Druid, it is an elf for Mason and if Mason he wants to go elves. Too. Right. So he has a little bit more incentive to go there. So it'll be interesting to see, does Alec take the druid here? Because I, I really can't think of any other enablers with Vizier that you would take to combo out with Ballista. There's not, I mean, you know, yep, there's the druid. There it is. Druid. Okay, that so we, we got the druid. All right. So Alec looking for that infinite mana. Yeah. Going to go off with that big walking Ballista, and that's a way that Alec can do, whoop. What? Whoop. Oh, no, oh, no, worry. we're not taking it back, are we? Ashiak two nightmare boogaloo. Yep. I assume he means we're this going one. here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Devoted druid locked back in. So Ashiak nightmare weaver. The other three mana Ashiak here. Uh, Brandon looking to put some planeswalkers on the battlefield and use those for some consistent yeah. milling while he holds on to the control of the battlefield, uh, control of the game. Uh, so I think the reason he took Druid, y yeah, it, it doesn't make sense um, at all, but you know, you don't stranger things have happened. Druid, yeah. So that's a way for Alec to go off with the walking ballista while still keeping Luris as his companion. Yep. And frantic search. Ooh, there yes. we go. Love to see a free spell. Yeah. Frantic Search is one of my favorite draw spells ever, and I think it's pretty clear that even though he is a little bit lighter on... Well, I guess he's got three mocks in, a Grim Monolith. Never mind. He's, he's got a decent amount of artifacts. I don't want to look at this version of Frantic Search. There we go. That's yeah, the version that's of the Frantic one, Search I know. That's the one that counts. None of the others do. So we're seeing, you know, the untap value stuff now for Dan. Do we get Palancron? at some point. Oh my gosh. I would love to see Dan play some Palancron. I would love... Has Palancron ever been picked? <laughs> I doubt it. I, I feel like there's no way. Like, it, it just can't have been picked. I the, the Here's here's why I think it hasn't been picked, right? I've only played in one of these, and I didn't pick Palancron. That's my evidence that Palancron <laughs> hasn't been picked. Yeah, and Glimpse. There we go. Yep, so Mason, Mason looking to go full LSV in Berlin, going off with Glimpse <laughs> of Nature here. Yep. Thank you, Hyphenated. Appreciate that. And Dark Depths. I want to I want to shout out Hyphenated real quick because because Hyphenated does such a great job of aggregating these stats and keeping track of yeah. everything that happens, not just in our VRDs, but in all kinds all of VRDs of that yeah. go on in the Discord. Um, and uh, uh, Hyphenated, I, I I I hate to ask you to do another thing, but uh, if you want to link people to the Discord, if you're interested in participating in some vintage rotisserie drafts, it's a great place to be. It is. And I don't have the link handy right now. Uh, and JVP, so... Steven, Steven popping off at the Dark Depths, looking to go Depth Stage, again, with the multiple tutors, that's going to be a lot easier for him to, yeah. to make that happen. Because he still hasn't picked Crop Rot, yep. uh, but we do have an Imp Seal and a Demonic Tutor Yes, indeed, already. I'm sure we'll see. I think we're likely to see Crop Rotation out of him. Yeah. Uh, I also really like the JVP on the back of Dreadhorde Arcanist that's there. That's great and pick. You know, so threat-wise, obviously Ren and Six is a good one. We've got Dragon Raid Channeler, Oof, Arcanist, and JVP. He's shaping up to be a pretty low-to-the-ground, efficient deck. Yes, he um, could absolutely pick up Hex Mage. And yes, Draft draft Matters cards no longer matter. Those yeah. are gone. We took yeah. those out. It's, uh, you're making picks. You're not drafting. Yeah. So it was basically we wanted to get rid of the one-card combos. Yeah, the... the, the Arcane Servant uh, off of the the seven mana Aether Searcher. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, sorry, fans of Paliano the High City. <laughs> sorry, fans of Garbage Fire. Garbage Fire is actually the. Card I love Garbage Fire. Most. Yeah. Andrew dipping dipping down to Tezzeret finally in like right. round nineteen. Yeah. It's it's about time. Uh, yes. I I am kind of shocked he waited that long, but 
hey, we'll we'll get plenty of artifact support because right now I think the only thing he has is Time Vault and a Brutality and an Unmask. So there are the protection spells that we were waiting to see from John. Yeah, with uh, with Grief gone, Collective Brutality and Unmask are some of the, the, the best cards remaining here. And of yeah. course, uh, Collective Brutality allowing John Ryan to act discard a card Put puts put a gristle brand or other other creature into his graveyard while still ripping an instant or sorcery out of an opponent's hand. Fantastic card. That's pretty good. Uh, Axe's removal as well. So if you know you need to get rid of a Douthy Void Walker or something like that, you can use that to help with that. It's yeah. it's honestly I think Collective Brutality is one of my favorite spells that they've ever printed just because it is so versatile. It, it does is, everything. This is a really well designed card, and I think. I think is a is 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 a good beacon for like the modern the modern modal best yeah. of one bob design you know like rest in peace rip okay so Andrew says Andrew, I may go helm yeah and Andrew is going in into his own lane right Andrew says basically no one no one is competing with me Andrew is putting on the blinders and can just pick whatever he wants yeah. And Joe takes advantage of that by grabbing a misdirection. That's solid. And there's Thespian Stage. So yeah. we knew we knew the Turbo Depths was coming. Yeah. If he wants Helm, he should have picked Helm now. Yeah, you definitely, like, I, I think we're going to see I agree with that. grab Helm before we get back to Andrew. I think so as well. That, that rest pick there kind of forecast it. And yep. if you were going to do that, because, again, if he's the only blue-white drafter, there's no pressure on rest in peace, yeah. right? So you just go for all right. I've got it. I think if he wants, if he wanted Rip, Rip to go with Helm, I think he should have taken Helm there. Yeah, quite frankly. Yeah, I I agree. Because uh, otherwise, Steven's under no pressure to take it. Yeah. But that's just a that's a gift to Steven here. Yeah. If if we were gonna go in on that, which again, who knows? Uh, Scoos. Scavenging uh, ooze. What a wonderful card. One of the most fairly designed cards, I think, in the history of Magic. It just it's a very fair, good card. Windfall, there we go. So now we're now we may see more wheels start to hit Dan's card pool there. You know there's a new promo scavenging news that just uh, just came out as part of the uh, Love Your Local Game Store promotion. I didn't know there was a Love Your Local Game Store promotion, yeah, Wizards they, of the Coast. Uh, yeah, they printed... <laughs> I, I didn't either until I got to uh, Wizards Wagon last okay. night. Um, but they printed five new promos. Uh, even Mind Sensor, huh. uh, Bolas' Citadel... Okay. Goblin, oh, I saw the Bolas' Citadel. Goblin I didn't guide, know what it was from. Scoos, and yeah. a blue card, and it's telling that I can't remember what the blue card was. Um, not Cryptic Command, which just got picked not, by Brandon. Nice pickup. Yes, actual Wheel of Fortune... Oh, Dig Through Time, thank you. Yeah. Oh, DTT, yeah. DTT's um, great. And those are available at your LGS. Uh, speaking of LGSs, uh, the fine folks at Realms of Gaming uh, gave us some cool uh, promo packs to give to the players of this event, and I'm also going to be adding those to the giveaway we did, so I'll get some more cool pieces of mail out to anybody who entered that, or to, to as many people as I can who entered that giveaway. Let's talk about Scurry Oak. Scurry Oak, yeah. So this is part of an infinite combo. Um, whenever more, one or more plus one plus one counters are put on Scurry Oak, you may make a one one green squirrel creature token. I'm just gonna let Alex speak for himself with this next pick here, because uh, we're gonna see. Yep, there it is, Ivy yep. Lane Denison. So whenever, so Ivy Lane Denison, whenever a green creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can put a plus one plus one counter on a creature you control. So you you play a green creature, you put a plus one plus one counter on Scurry Oak, and then you make infinite squirrels. Yep. So. Apparently, Scurry Oak, good enough to give up Companion yeah. uh, looking for another two-card win. And Mystic Sanctuary finally leaving the board in, Gosh. what is this, 20? Yep. Uh, to Brandon, who, who not not t not tipping his hand yet, which I think is nice. We just have Brain Freeze, so maybe maybe he's on combo, but you and I know he said we're going. Thanks, Oritard. Appreciate that. Elaine. How are you not following? Elaine, Elaine? How come are you, on. First of all, how are you not following? And second of all, when do you want to call in? You yeah. Can call in whenever. Uh, check, your, check your Facebook. Glorp Glorp. Appreciate the follow. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it does work with Cathar's Crusade if he does elect to draft that. Although, again, there's only one person who's drafted, well, two people, maybe, I guess. Alec drafted Vizier, but no other white cards. Thanks, Dereal Hines. Appreciate the follow. Take your time, Elaine. I just, I'm just, uh, I'm just, I'm just giving you grief while you're asleep because I know yeah. you're going to come back. <laughs> as soon cold. as you're awake. Wheel of Fortune finally leaving the board there. So that is the first red card out of Dan. Um, 
following because of the squeaky jiggy being drafted. It makes me happy, yeah. too. I'm yeah. so happy to see Scurrio doing its job. Here. Yeah. Coming out of Modern Horizons 2 for some sweet combo action. And let's see, Mason here, Rex Age. Yep. That's a solid one. I, I think the nice thing about the deck that Mason has coming together is that he has so many... Oh, and there's Null Rod out oh, of Steven. Oh, Steven taking the Null Rod and not the Helm. Interesting. Wow. Does he think that Andrew is just looking for the rest in peace as hate, as hate and he can he can float the helm, or does he just it, not care about it? Oh, yes. Yeah, is, is he trying to next level him and just have Null Rod? I, that's... He's already got two two-card combos, right? He, or one and a half. Uh, no, no, he two. has chain. Yeah, he has, he has two two-card combos. Yeah, does he want the third? Depth stage. Yeah. Yeah, taking Null Rod over helm here is a statement, uh, but he does need the Null Rod because he got locked out of Collector Oof. Yeah, he did. That's uh, very important. So I, I think I actually like not being pressured into the... Uh, yeah, he could old school modern pod combo. Yeah, he could go with some Kitchen Finks. He could go yeah. with some, uh, some Murderous Red Cap. What was that, Rule 374.2 or something like that? Yeah. <laughs> with Juniper Order Ranger? Oh my gosh, Juniper Order Ranger. We're going we're gonna to go back to Project X. Right? Yeah. Let's get Crypt Chip yep. out here. We're going to do it. Yeah, no. Uh, I Red Cap, obviously yeah. not a thing, but... Yeah. Uh, uh, so Negate, so Joe is still going with the efficient interaction. I He's kind of light on threats, though. Yes, Good Fortune, Unicorn, and Grum Gully, both good alternatives to the five-mana Juniper yes. Order Ranger here. Yes. Played many a Good Fortune, Unicorn, and Grum Gully in Commander. <laughs> Great cards there. <laughs> I think Luris is going to end up in the main deck or in the yeah. sideboard. Or just, just in the sideboard, not being the companion. Here's gonna... So we have, we have two picks here to get Helm mm. before it goes back to Steven. Yes. Do we, do we go here for it? I think if I'm Andrew here... I it's grab, an extra win con? I grab Helm, because it's an extra win con, and I if, if I have Rip in play, I can tinker for my Helm. That's true, because right now all we have is Time Vault, and obviously, you know, right. like you and I said, you have plenty of keys you can get late. Yeah, there's, there's, so. just, there's, a, there's an, an infinite key ring in this one. Yeah. You're never, you're never getting locked. If somebody takes Manifold Key, which is the best key, you can yeah. still take Voltaic. Like, you're fine. Cold Sam, also a Juniper Order, Order Ranger. Yeah. yeah. We did have a question earlier earlier today. Mason, I think, asked, when we were talking about the self-tutoring cards, Mason asked if the uh, like Surging Sentinels and the other Ripple cards counted for that. Mm -hmm. They do not. Nope. But uh, I thought that was an interesting question and, and said a lot about Mason's knowledge of the format. I thought that was really cool. Lose focus. Yes. Let's take a look at Lou's focus here. Everyone's favorite rep this, card. <laughs> this card. Okay, I am I'm kind of surprised. I guess it doesn't matter because it's not like John's gonna draft the helm. Yeah. I love this card. Yeah. I am so happy it got drafted because it's one of my favorite counters that they've printed in years. It's so good. Yeah. It's it's a fantastic pickup for this format. John Ryan with Looting and Iona. That's yep. another good uh, reanimation target. Manifold key before the helm. Andrew okay. locks it in. Locking in vault key says, yep. I want the best one, manifold key, because just in case, I guess I need to sneak something through. Of course, manifold key. Let's take a look at it. Yeah. Does yeah. does let you swing through with your five fives once yep. you alt Tez. Yes, indeed. But uh, unlikely. That you unlikely, have yeah. That. Because this, if this you're isn't vintage. Tez, manifold keys of five. It's a five five on its own. There. Yeah. Get in there. The the odds that your opponent is just get me in at the split. Yes, Elaine, we can we'll, do that. We'll get you in. Uh, we'll 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 discord you in in, a, in at the at the at the break. That sounds great. And I see you you're messaging me here. That's probably good. Yeah. Or something's happening. Anyway, we'll figure it out. No, don't switch. Discord, stop detecting new audio devices. All right, so now we have Joe. Do we see a Delver here? There's not really pressure on him to pick it, no, I feel like. He doesn't need to. I mean, he's got the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Like, he, he doesn't... He's so... Like, no one's going for his deck. No, I feel like he's the world is his oyster. He can just hang out, right? Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't care. Like, the only the only person he's really fighting with is Andrew over these two-mana counter spells, right? Sure, yeah. So we could see, we could see like, a miscalculation or something here. Mana yeah. Leak. Mana Leak, yep, there we go. That makes sense. When you see the lose focus go, all right, yeah. let's get the mana leak in. Yeah. Ragavan yeah, Ra Ragavan does, does does feel better, but there's really nobody else in red yeah. to compete. Leyline of the Void. Steven picks up Leyline of the Void and says, I'm going to get Helm coming back. Here. Yep. 
that's a that's Steven locking it in. Yeah. You love to see it. I mean, free graveyard hate is pretty good. Yeah, with uh, with both John Ryan and Joe looking to take real advantage of the graveyard here. Yeah. Yeah, he has Delver. Yeah, he he has Delver. Rage. That's a uh, yeah. Darcy, that's a good nickname. I like that. Yeah, I like I'm that adopting too. Adopting that. Yeah. Yeah, this is interesting. This is this is such a like. I feel like there is a three-dimensional chess game going on with this this helm of helm of obedience. Either that, yeah, or just like, or Andrew for just just didn't want it. Andrew didn't care about it and just wanted to nab the rest in peace before somebody went for it with the helm combo. Yeah, I and it's it, I appreciate the discipline of Andrew going for key there over it. Yeah, but I feel like the discipline of either Stephen or Andrew is going to run out in this next round, and someone is grabbing helm. I so you can see Stephen with that cell selected. Yeah, think, he he knows. I think Stephen has already gone into Notepad, uh, typed in typed <laughs> yeah. in Helm of Obedience, and we've we've done Control X. We're about to get Control V. Yeah, we are. It's just it's up to Mason here and seeing what what we have going on. Mason is I I'm really. I'm really impressed with Mason's draft so far. Both, yeah. both of the folks from Chicago, they're doing very, very a well. Great job. They, yeah. And and they they fit in real well here. I, these are these are are great people. I'm so yeah. glad they came on down. Same. Which again, if you join the Discord, yeah. you can drop a line, and maybe we'll just pick you to show up at a VRD one day. It'll be yeah, great. Because they just messaged us. They were like, "Hey, do you need people? Because we'll come play." And we're like, "Yes." Absolutely. Yeah. We love to cross pollinate these communities. Yeah. It's so much fun. Any chance Dana goes for a super diverse land base to allow for Tainted Pact and Oracle? I, I don't know because we've got our shock lands gone. We've got our dual lands gone. He may just go like pain land, Karu land or something. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. We'll see. Demonic consultation is on the table, right? We still, it we still is. Yes. Demonic consultation. So yeah. It's going to go before Tainted Pact. There we go. Appreciate that. Thank you, hyphenated. Elaine just messaged me and said, and I quote, Ooh, ooh woo. So that's good. She's she's ready. All right. And, oh, it looks like we're typing. We may be ready. Do. What else does he take here? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> and we talk about the vaccination policy. This is safer than it looks. Yes, we yes. Are, we are all fully vaccinated here. Uh, I don't think Mark would uh, would allow a would would bring a, a person who is over the age of twelve into his home that was not vaccinated. I don't no, think Mark too many Gordon small children. Have that yeah, we're we're about safety here. Skull clamp. Okay, so we're man. I love that pick. I, Skull Clamp and Elves is great until you're on the Lord strategy. Yes. Uh, but the nice thing is you only need one or two Lords, really, and they may not even make the cut. Um, are, are we going to go, like, Crater Hoof, do you think, with that? Ooh. Does does Mason go the EDH route? Yeah, Strip Mine and Wasteland when, exactly. Seriously. When, how, when was the last time you saw Strip, strip Mine go this late? Because the answer is never. Yeah, we're in the twenty-second round, and there is still no strip mine. Like, I it, maybe Steven, he, he's like, all right, I'm I'm getting helm here, and on the crack back, I'll get strip mine. I just I don't understand it. All right, Ooh, so breach. Dan with one okay. Of the, uh, the most broken cards printed in the last couple of years, Underworld Breach, is uh, is is going to go for some some graveyard combo here. I'm mm. very excited to see exactly how this plays out. Yeah. But uh, he's got the opal to go with the breach, so. Uh, and, uh, of course, that works a little better with two opals. It does. But uh, I'm sure he'll figure it out. Yeah. Dig through time for Brandon. DTT, all right. So Brandon's just going to get all of his mill stuff in, like, Super late. Yeah, he doesn't need to if hurry for it. Yeah, if he Yeah, if he does at this point. Grand yeah, Abolisher, there we go. Grand Abolisher, which is one of the best white hate bears, I think, printed. Yeah, Library Probably. of Alexandria, yeah. Shell Dock Isle. Wow. Ranger of Eos. Ranger or Ranger Captain, Captain of, Eos. of Eos. So that's the one that searches for a creature card with CMC or mana value, I suppose, one or less. CMC. Uh, yeah, so that'll, that'll fetch up a Walking Ballista, which is CMC zero mm -hmm. in your library. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Urza Saga still out there. Yeah, Saga's out there. So ninth is... 
Never, never gone before the ninth round. Okay, but has it gone as late as the twenty second? I mean, that's pretty ridiculous. Oh no, I think I think Hyphen is saying that ninth is the latest. Oh, is the latest? Has, in oh, okay. Database. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and with Ren and Six, you would think that there would be a strip mine taken as well. You, you really would, but uh, I mean, who's got that Ren and Six, Joe? Yeah, Joe. I'm a big fan of Barbarian Ring there too. Oh, Rean Reanimate. Rean Did Brandon just hate pick? Oh, yep, there's a lot of groans coming from the other room. We're in the 23rd round with Rhiannon. Oh, wait, no, because he's, he's milling. That's right. Oh, he's just going to he's just gonna reanimate your thing. Yeah. Oh, no, that's that's brilliant. Because it look, we thought it was a hate pick, and we yeah. didn't know what he's building. No, that's a, uh, that's a value pick. Yeah, that is, that is real good, because it's easily the best reanimation spell. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Elaine, of course, uh, yeah. our, our last VRD, yeah. uh, she she uh, did not quite get there in the finals against yeah. John Ryan, our current reigning champion. So uh, Yeah, it, it could be a hate pick that has value because uh, Brandon told us beforehand he's basically building a blue-black mill strategy. Yep. So having reanimate there that he can reanimate your... <laughs> we have a frowny face uh, yes. over here for John in the yeah, draft. John Ryan's <laughs> I love it when players communicate with us through the spreadsheet. Yes, it is the great. I'm excited. I'm excited to Skype to uh, to Discord Elaine in here. Yeah, I'm, I'm very very happy to uh, to hear from her. Of course, she's uh, she's she's off in the in the, yeah. the far away north right now. Could not be here for this one. Hesh, Hesh has a good point there. Ashiak is a nonbo with Reanimator, but I I don't think Brandon cares. Yeah, I think. I, I think there was an element of, all right, we're going to hate pick here as well as everything else. So we'll we'll see, though. Could be wrong. Yeah. Interested to see what Dan goes for here. Is it time to start locking in, like, uh, another wheel, potentially the Echo of Eons? Yeah. Especially with that Underworld breach. He's really now... We, we now know what's happening here yeah. in, a, in a much more serious way. Yeah, he's he's definitely shown his hand here and, you know, this is where I'm at. This is what I'm doing. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Deal with it. <laughs> Spire Fire Bluff. Bluff okay. Out. Good pick. Yeah, that's a very good pick. Especially, I mean, he can, you know, potentially turn one a twister. Yep. Not that you ever would. No. Uh, turn one wheel, though, yes. if nothing else. I mean, he could potentially, what, Tolarian Academy, have four mana on turn one, maybe more with a diamond. Yeah, there's, so there's, there's he's, ways. He's to, fast. Uh, there's ways to work up the time spiral pretty early here. Yeah. So. And what do we get from Mason? I feel like some of the best removal is gone at this point. You yes. know, you've got you've got Steven with two of the best pieces in all of Magic, in my opinion, and then we have Prismatic ending. So we've got Swords, Path, yep. and like Vindicate maybe if you want to go that route. But there's not a lot of the really solid catch-all removal spells that are left. In this format, I think you even just take Anguish on making over Vindicate for the instant speed. You don't that's true, yourself. yeah. No, that's true, yeah, because there's not a lot of decks that you're attacking a life total, which yeah. I, I think, honestly, may give Joe an advantage. I, I, I will tell you, if I had if I had been conscripted to draft today, I would have drafted Lightning Bolts. Yeah, yeah. Like, Ab absolutely. That's just, what I've done. Yeah. Because I know Vindicate hitting land is a big deal. That's, that's actually true. a really good point I've yeah. made Summoner's Pack. Yes, okay. here it is. There we go. So, Mason looking to just be able to find whatever it is he needs at any given time. Crater of. And Steven locks up the defense grid. There we go. Oh, so yet again, he's applying pressure for someone else to take. And Joe steals the animate dead from John Ryan. No! Looking, it looks like we're, we're, we're scuttling the, the reigning champion here. Gainsay. Andrew our Andrew very early Gainsay. Staying disciplined. Of course. Gainsay is oh. a <laughs> surprisingly powerful card in this format. John Ryan highlighting that frowny face. Ugh. Gainsay strictly worse than the new Gainsay. It's yep. true. What is that? Uh, dress down? Mystical. Or... Oh, yeah. Oh, and Jace's defeat, rather, yes. Yeah. Dress down is just a card that we should talk about because it beats True Name Nemesis. Yes, it does. But yes, Jace's defeat, of course, the, the strictly better Gainsay. Yeah. Mystical Dispute is gone. Oh, yes, quite so, a bit ago. As far as reanimation cards, John Ryan. Uh, Exhume? Exhume, Persist, 
Persist is a good one. Um, or does Persist... Is Persist... Oh, no, Unmarked Grave is the, the legendary. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the one that's restricted against legendaries. So you can yeah. persist. Unmarked Grave, not so good with uh, Gristle Brand and Iona. No. Staying disciplined during the run on John Ryan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. This, this, this was a bad round for John Ryan. Dance of the Dead, Necromancy... Oh yeah, because persist is, is persist? oh yeah, persist is non legendary. Yep. yep, yep. So persist does not get crystal. It cannot or Iona. or Iona. So so yes, exhume necromancy, mm -hmm. and then just it gets worse from there. Yeah, dance of the dead. <laughs> yeah, classic. Everyone's favorite ice age. Gorio's vengeance. Yeah. That's a true one. Oh, he actually he could audible into sneak and show here. Yeah, Gorio's vengeance and shallow grave are both still options here. Yeah. Um, exhume. There we go. Yep. Show, show and tell. tell. Yep, happening. so we're, we're going into Sneak and Show now, which I, I think is a good audible here, now that he knows his graveyard hate is kind of, you know, just gone. Yeah, and, and like, honestly, what is he afraid of with Show and Tell? Not uh, much. Yeah, right? no. Like, Alec has not done anything with that channel here. No. So John Ryan making a smart play, yeah. going for these symmetrical effects that he can break the, break the symmetry break on. Break the symmetry on, for sure. Yes, that does mean Alec ought to pick... Uh, Emrakul sooner than later. Sworn. Yeah. Draft the Emrakul. Yeah, is Andrew going to draft the Emrakul? I hope so. Someone someone should draft the Emrakul. Yeah, so, sure. someone will draft Eldrazi today, and I think John is smart enough that if someone drafts Emrakul, he'll just take Ulamog. Yes. Yep, you know, yep. call it a day. Um, it's the right thing to do. Yeah. To be able to show it in. Not not Ulamog, but Ulamog. <laughs> um, yes, yes. Yes. Ulamog, the, the infinite gyre. Yes. Yes. Breach it. Yeah. yeah rip. Tragic. Tragic. Uh, is Andrew still playing this Tinker? I think he is. I think he has to. You've got a Time Vault. You've got your key. Um, he's got his Tezzeret. So he's got Vault. He's got key. He's got Tezzeret. He has nothing to sacrifice yet. Yeah. Uh, he but will. he can pick that up later. You know, your Thran Dynamos, yeah. your Felwar Stones. Not that that's a good one. You but pick up some, like, yeah. two mana rock. Like, you pick up a Signet or whatever. Yeah, and he's blue white, so he can get Talisman, Signets. There's plenty for him. Yeah, yeah artifact, artifact Lands, lands as available. well. They're all Swords available. to Plowshares. There we go. Here. Yep. Very smart. Having having a, a Swords to Plowshares against some of these big creatures is, yeah. is really important, being able to beat John Ryan. Also, be able to beat Alex Creature uh, Combo deck. Yeah. And Witherbloom Apprentice, Douthy Vord Walker. I, I think it's it's nice that Steven is actually diversified. So I'm wondering if he's going to go for Professor Oryx. Mm, he could. He could get To uh, really have like an extra permanent type that doesn't just die to bolt. Yep. Um, you know, he has Dark Depths Thespian Stage, which, I mean, granted, I don't think, you know, if an infinite gy an infinite Euro would be. I mean, I, I would eat that. I would. I would eat that forever. Joe picks, yeah. picks up the lightning, lightning bolt. bolt. There Solid. we go. Yeah. yeah. Steven could pick up uh, Secret Liliana here. Secret Secret Dr. Liliana. Yeah. Although I don't think he really needs to. I no, think he if, if he really... wants to go Helm, he can Helm here. I'd be shocked not to see a Helm here. But yeah. I... Liliana the last, last hope. hope. Okay, so we're still on the value train. Although that emblem is probably one of the most powerful emblems in Magic. Yeah, it doesn't win you the game right away. But it will. But it will. Turns. Yeah. You know uh, who's got a really interesting emblem that I think we might see show up later in the draft is Mordenkainen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That card's very interesting. I also cannot hear Mordenkainen without thinking of the video from the first Summoner game. Ah, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, my If you gosh. asked, I cast Mordenkainen's Faithful Watchdog. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course... That faithful watchdog, well represented by that second ability on the card. Yeah. Ooh. Caracas. A really, really good hate pick, I think. Also just good value. Yep, good um, value. Great pickup for Mason here. Yeah. Helps protect him from John Ryan. Damn High tide. But we don't have brain freeze. Uh, yeah. Brandon oh, brain Brandon, Brandon gets the Emrakul. the Emrakul. Oh, says, my God. If you want your Eldrazi, you're going to have to go through me. Yeah. With, without any of the acceleration to cast it. And this this is the thing about Brandon. He's been at a few VRDs. He will meme pick for a little bit. Yep. Always. Brandon, Always. Uh, I think Brandon is, is very happy to take Emrakul away from oh, his yeah. opponents here. There are multiple people that want this Emrakul. Uh, well, and the thing is, he's 
he doesn't need to pick his stuff till in the 30s, like no. we said. He can wait until after this break. Right. So, so he can kind of afford to just bite out other people's picks. Oh, there's the kitchen finks. Alex picks up, Alex picks up the finks, goes for that infinite life combo. Thank you, hyphenated. Caracas, Before library so, and strip mine. Viscera, Viscera seer. seer. So we okay. are we are going full full combo here. Yeah. Yeah, library might not at this point. I don't I don't know that it will. I think if anyone were to pick it, it would probably be Dan. Dan could take it. The wheel. Um, oh, there we like, have it. Our Andrew Andrew could take it. Yeah. Right? Tasha's hideous laughter. There so it is. Happening. But, both but. both of our picks are now officially in the books. Turnabout. Yep. So Dan is just on the high tide plan. Yeah. Dan. Dan is is going Oof. full combo winter with that turnabout. Very excited to see how his deck yeah. plays out. But Tasha's hideous laughter. Thank you, Olia Shea. Appreciate the follow. Yeah. Helm is still not taken somehow. I again, they're being so disciplined about their picks. Yes. Uh, which I definitely appreciate. I think the standoff is probably coming to an end soon. Oh, natural order. Natty order, along with the uh, green sun zenith. Um, Progenitus. I think I think we're very <laughs> likely to see a uh, crater hoof. Yeah, I think so. Um, which you know, again, oh, cosmic butcher of truth, world gorger yes! dress. Oh my gosh. Oh no. That's why he went Animate That's Dead. That's why he has Animate Dead. The Delver player is going World Gorger. World Gorger Is he combo. taking Hellkite? Is he taking Hellkite? I can't Are we going to see a World Gorger combo? I can't wait to see what this looks like. I cannot stress how excited I am for this. I got to do it once in Eternal Masters draft, and it was one of the most fun drafts I've ever had in my life because I was able to do it. Worst case, oh, you can just man. draw the game, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, like, you can. You have You have the, the, the intentional draw with only my consent. Yeah. yeah. And Stoneforge. So now we're going to see the swords go. Oh, Necro. What's the what's the premier Stone, Stoneforge target going to be here? Are we going to see swords? Or are we going to see Cauldra complete? I think complete or Fire and Ice. Yeah. No, I don't know. We may see uh, uh, Fire or Body and Mine. Or not Body and Mine. Black and Green. Oh, Feast, Feast and famine. famine. Because some of the best. Yep, there's Dance of the Dead. Yeah, the Penny Dreadful special. Yep. Yeah, Dragon Exiles animate, animate dead, Dragon dies, repeat over and over again, so you just loop the Bermans that you have in play into and out of play, you tap yep. your lands for infinite mana, yup. Kill. And then, Fireball. Then you do, do it. something, or you don't do anything, yeah. and because it's an unbounded loop that you don't control, the, the game is a draw. Yeah, and the, the nice thing is that if you do have something to do, what you can do is cast the spell on one of those turns with that spell on the stack, yep. and then end the game. Um, but yeah, I think I think Calder Complete is just such a good target mm -hmm. that there's no reason you would go for anything else. Now, he doesn't have to take Calder here. Uh, no, not no at all. No one's going to take Calder away from him unless Brandon gets a, a wild hair and, and yeah. goes for it. But I, I think Brandon may be, now that we he, we've signaled we have our mill cards, it may just be time. I do love that we picked up Emrakul and Kozilek against this show and tell here. Helm's still yeah. not picked. Right, yeah, you need a second card to animate for the loop to end. And as long yeah. as you don't have that, you've got that unbounded loop. Yeah. That that is that you do not get to choose to terminate. Nope. But if of course, notably, if you can terminate a loop like that, you must you must yeah. pick a number of iterations and then stop. So here's an interesting thought. Do we see Steven? go Urborg Bubbling Muck at some point to maybe <laughs> fringe cast the Kozilek? I doubt it. I, I don't think here. so, but I think man, I would love to, that. To, to, to get the mill deck, I think that's here to get John yeah. Ryan. Yeah. Calder complete. Yep. Living weapon, indestructible, and keyword elemental. Uh, my, my wife is very excited to put this into play off her stone forges in modern. Oh, yeah. Uh, we, That's we, ridiculous. Uh, after we, uh, we... We got into modern in paper when, when it was reasonable to play in paper again, mm -hmm. and then uh, we, yeah. we left for a month when Modern Modern Horizons 2 came out. So she's hyped to play this. I'm hyped to play Living End. Yeah. It's... I'm... Modern's in a really interesting spot right now. I'm actually considering playing it again since Legacy is... Dead. Rest yeah, in peace. Rip legacy, but uh, modern's modern's a fun time. Yeah. Uh, and and the nice thing about like local casual modern tournaments is you can just play your deck like even if you're when your deck you know in modern 
you sort of cycle through. Your your deck is good. Your deck is mediocre. Sometimes your deck is bad. Yeah. But in local tournaments, it really doesn't matter. If you're playing like an eight dollar tournament, you can just keep playing your deck and it's yeah. fine. Uh, okay. I I want to address that in chat real quick, Elaine. Uh, I think. It, Okay is probably the best description of that because you had a vial at seven. Yeah, wait. What? <laughs> wait, what? You you did what? Wait, you can't vial that in. You you still in four. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Unholy. I can't read that. Unholy heat. Ah, so uh, okay. That's the delirium. Yeah. Shock that uh, deals six damage instead. Yep. So. Right, we know, Joe knows he's not going face, right? He's not going face with his shock, right? Yeah. He wants this card that deals six. Oh, Karn the Great Creator to Steven. So Steven may be looking, Steven may be looking for Lattice. Yeah. That's a two-card combo that he can just get. Yep. No, yeah. no one's in it. I, I would have expected Stephen, or sorry, Dan to be the one that was in on it. No, but Dan's, Dan's yeah. going full, full combo. Dan, Dan, Dan can't put cards in his deck that are off planet because Allosaurus Shepherd was taken. Mason has to settle for Gaius Herald. Yeah, which of course is the is an elf, the sort of older version. Yeah, right, and it's a two mana creature. And there's a Sting Fist, Unholy Heat, like an Oklahoma City chili dog, which. Damn. Urza Lord High Artificer. There so, we yes, go. That's the that's the card that Dan is looking for here. He's yep. going to take those artifacts and turn them into mock sapphires. Thanks for the follow, Dale. Appreciate you. Yeah. So this this is now when we start to see decks take shape. Everyone's here's my strategy. I'm laying it out on the table. We're past the generic fits in any archetype powerful and into here's power in my deck there are a lot of lands still out there there's a ton uh no workshops taken yeah which there's no workshops player but there's a lot of lands that are just like just regular lands for fixing right yeah that are still out there there's shocks out there there's fast lands out there in the fast you know like are there shocks left i think there's i mean I know... Like, Temple Garden still oh, out yeah, there. Oh, yeah, Temple Garden sure. is still out there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, the blue ones are all gone. But, but uh, like, Stomping Ground yeah. is out there. There's there's those 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 sideline shocks out yeah. there, non-blue. Um, I mean, all the, the fast lands outside of Spire Bluff are out there. The pain lands are all out there. Yep. Um, there's there's quite... The Triomes are all still out there, right? Yeah. Nobody's, nobody's taking those. The, the, there's there's going to be minimal interest, I think, in the Triomes here. Sheldock, Sheldock Isle, there's yes. Sheldock. All Sheldock right. Sheldock Isle, my pick used to be a cube sleeper hit. Now everybody knows. Yeah. But like back back when it was printed. <laughs> nope, that's fine. Back when it was printed, <laughs> I uh, my 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 friend Andy Cooper Faust uh, was was a big cube guy up in NorCal, and he was yeah. he was very early on the Sheldock Isle train. So now we have Alec, and what are we doing? We've we've got our two card creature combos, right? Yes. Um, Alec needs to start taking ways to stop his opponents from interacting with Shalai. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Shalai, of course, uh, is the the sort of flag bearer by default, giving you your planeswalkers and your other creatures hexproof. And so Shalai says, "Me first, please." Yep. And picking up Carrion Feeder as that second sack outlet. And Brandon, uh, showing his commitment sand. to Mill with that fractured Sandy. What a card! Winter Orb. It's the most fun card in Magic. Yes, that's my favorite card. There's a lot of noise out in the in the other room for Winter Orb. It's it's the best card in Magic. Look, Magic is fun. Yep. Winter Orb lets you play more Magic. Yep. How is that not the most fun card in Magic? Yeah, it, it, if, if you want your game of Magic to go on much longer. And here in the world of VRD, uh, the only clock we have is the clock that says we need to leave Mark's house at some point. Yes. Um... Shalai does have a little synergy with Scurrio. Yeah. Little, it, it, it can start... It's, it's, a little bit. It can, it can start the chain going, right? Most hated. No, most loved. Winter, Winter Orb is great. Look at how cute that bear is. How can you not love that card? So... When, There's the Crater Hoof. When you're a young person, right, and you yeah. play Magic... Stasis also good. I think I think as a, as a young person who's played Magic... If you if you play Magic as a kid, everybody has that first card that they really mm -hmm. liked that they accidentally left in their pocket and put through the wash. Yeah. Mine was Winter Orb. Oh, yeah. Do you uh, still have it? I mean, uh, it was... That copy. That copy? No, it oh, okay. was not in a state to be... Yeah. It was in pieces when it yeah, came out of the washing machine. My mother was like, uh, you left this in your pocket. And I was like, well, rip. Oops. 
So, like, what what can I do? Stand standstill is less fun than stasis and uh, winter orb. The yeah, sec they, second from the light has you. Second from the right has you asking a lot of questions. It's it's mill. It's great. It's yeah. mill. We're we're uh, we're going off. We're going into the mill zone. Although it, it interestingly, he does need to do something to stop the Eldrazi. Yes. Uh, he has one of them, obviously. So there's only one person that he can't mill out. There's a lot force of force spike. Okay. Force spike solid. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of options though for Brandon. Brandon can grab cards like uh, surgical. Brandon yeah. Can ca- grab literal extract. Yeah. Um, the gravestorm one. What the hell is that card called? Bitter ordeal. Bitter ordeal thing. He actually did mention wanting to draft bitter ordeal, Brandon even though he wasn't. To draft I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, hideous laughter. Yeah. Oh. The stop was too low. We put the stop too low. Fair. Fragmentize and Force Spike, and we did get the Lattice out of yes. Steven. Fragmentize, that's a great card. I love that card. Uh, Nature's Claim still available. Yes, it is. Fragmentize reminded me that Nature's Claim yeah. is still out there. Still out there. And yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to the mill deck probably more than anything. There's also the, what's the bad green Fragmentize? Uh, natural state. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's still out there too. Yep. The Which bad green fragmentized? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> the card that was printed before fragmentized. Thank you, thank you for knowing what I meant. <laughs> yep. God, yeah. Yeah, that that is a CEDH staple over fragmentized. Yeah, natural state being an instant. Yeah, course, it, so it's huge. It's not the bad is a misnomer. Uh, yeah. I just, but I the only reason left. I knew exactly was because C. It's yes. a CDH staple. Because yeah, I, yeah I, I see that card in my head and I go, "That's that CDH card." Yeah, so a bad fragmentize <laughs> that I have in only my like high level decks. Yep. Right. All right. So what do we what do we go here? Because I I, I kind of feel bad mm. for John. He's just kind of gotten hated out of everything, but he can still go sneak attack and try to. I feel like maybe he gets fatties here. I th- I think I think he can he can take like one fatty and some kind of you know like a necromancy or something. Yeah. I think the thing is that people took we, we took reanimator away from John Ryan. We took uh we took Animate Animate Dead. Dead away from John Ryan. But necromancy, necromancy there's necromancy. In. Uh but here's the yeah. thing, there's a lot of redundancy available. People people are coming at the king here and I think they may have missed. Yeah. Uh, so that's interesting. Necromancy. We still have Gorios yep. too. Gorios, Vengeance, Shallow Grave, both available for that Tin Fin style deck that we I know and love. like Elish Norn a little bit here because there's no fatties Norn outside is, of his deck. Norn will play well against Alec and uh, Mason here. Yeah. Very much so. And Joe. Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre, still available as yep. well, along with the uh, New Drazi. The new Drazi that do not are, are not quite don't have the same punch. I mean, no. Ceaseless Hunger is the best of, of that bunch, yeah, really. Yeah, yeah. New, New Lamog is heads and shoulders yes. above the rest. But we may see Archon of Cruelty, one of my favorite cards from Modern Horizons 2. Let's go! Yes, I love this card. It is one of the most efficient beaters they've printed probably ever. This got reanimated against me at the pre-release, and I was <laughs> oh. very dead. My opponent, my opponent reanimated this and then immediately apologized to me, and I was like, yep. no, you did it. You should frame this you, moment. You, you this persisted this. Let's do it, yeah. And I was just like, this is, this is unreal. Because it's just, it's immediately. You helix them, you draw a card, they pitch a card, and they sack something. Yeah, it's such it's it's just Archon of Ultimatum. Skyclave Apparition, okay. So this is a great card because it's going to grab any non land non token permanent with CMC four or less, and frankly that's most non land non token permanents. Yes it is. Out. And if they get an XX blue illusion, I don't care. That's yeah. fine. This card just eats your permanent. You don't get it back. It's not oblivion ring. No, it's it's not about and it's not about giving them the the dude. The dude is irrelevant. It's about hitting the winter orb. It's about having that extra catch all removal. Skyclave Evaporation actually has one of my least favorite abilities in magic. Do you know what that is? What's that? Looks like it has flying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean it, it's ability. it's it's a spirit. It should have flying. Yeah. It's City got, of Brass. City of Brass. Now this is interesting. Uh City of Brass, uh you know, I There's guess nobody's going to twiddle it. Mine. Oh, crop rot. And we got the crop rotation for the land combo. Yes, good. Crop rotation and helm still out there. Yep. Still just hanging out. Yeah. Nice mock, shame of something illusion. And yeah, and <laughs> there's there's still a helm and there's still a strip mine. I yep. still don't understand how there's a strip mine. 
there's always that there's always a couple cards in in any vintage rotisserie draft there's always a couple cards that if you are outside the draft you're like what is happening why yeah. have these cards not gotten picked and today it's strip mine I, and it's library we're at what 28 yeah we're at tw- uh, 28 yeah round 28 yeah, because at any time Alec has abandoned the Loris plan. At any yeah. any time, yeah. like if Alec doesn't go strip mine, like strip crucible here on this go round, I'll be shocked. I will too. I it's just such a powerful effect in this format, and it, you you've abandoned the Loris plan. So like, all right, fine, you can get Ramanop too, but we, you need the strip for we that. We've not drafted miscalculation, notably. We drafted uh, misdirection, but not miscalculation yet. Lose yeah. Focus and and uh, Mana Leak, of course, went. Yeah. Rune, rune stag, not good enough. But I like a miscalc. It's nice to yeah, be able to miscalc cycle good. that. Yep. Um, it's always relevant because worst case, it replaces itself. Honestly, I'd consider playing Tuari Disruption, but that would yeah. go like in the 40s. We also don't have a Jace's Defeat, but we have a Gainsay. That's true. Jace's Defeat still out there. I would guess that's going to go later. Concordant, Concordant Crossroads. Crossroads. Yes. Yes. An it's the Elf it's the Rock green, Star. Green Fervor. Yep. All right, I'm excited about that. And there's four mana Jace. Yep, Jace, Wielder of Mysteries for Dan. The backup plan for Mr. Dan getting that Jace, Wielder of Mysteries with to go with that Thassa's Oracle. Still no Lab Man. No, still still no Lab Man, but worth worth noting that he does have the backup now to Thassa's Oracle. Mm-hmm. So we, we've kind of... Because I think you, you may have thought, oh, maybe he's away from Thassa's Oracle with all these wheels and high tide. He's doing something else. And now we know. No, he's going to... I mean, He's all in on that. Yeah, he's going to try to mill himself out using yeah. the Breach and the wheels, right? Yeah. That's the plan. Is yep. Wheel of Fortune, Underworld, Breach, best friends forever. Yeah. Okay, it's time. Oh, my. It's, it's that It's, it's time, that time for the, the, time the ritual. In every VRD where we must show you our, our dining, the Pointosaurus pizza. This is, I, I can't even express to you what how this pizza, large this is. This is. So Does big. this look at my head? My head is very big, and the pizza is much bigger than it. That yes, should tell you something. It is enormous, and this is how we treat our players and us every VRD as we get a Pointosaurus. If you're ever in St. Louis, you should take the Pointosaurus challenge. Mm-hmm. Two people have to finish a three-foot pizza. It's uh. You're probably gonna throw up. You, you'll yeah, you'll die. Yeah, it's good though. It's it's so good. It's worth it. So Brandon picking up archive trap during that time and and okay, Alec, I respect that actually. Scrubland Temple Garden, frankly, I do respect that. Yeah. But if we don't, I is he gonna if he hangs strip mine before the break and then oh takes crucible? God. That's gonna be so. Fu- if he just like picks <laughs> picks strip mine and then yeah. says, what's up? I remember yeah. this card exists. Yep. yep. How how does nobody remember? Come on. I I feel like Steven may be a guy that gets it too. He he may very well. He's very in tune with those two card combos. Yeah. I don't think I can do the pointer source thing anymore. I I uh <laughs> I the heartburn. I well, I think my doctor would like I think like like I'm pretty sure my doctor, you know, put a microchip in me so yeah. that she knows when my cholesterol starts to go up. She knows. <laughs> Drown, Drown in, in the, the lock. lock. So Brandon, very good picking up one of my favorite cards for the mill deck. Yeah. Do you think we're gonna see a visions of beyond out of Brandon? Because I. Do. I hope so. Yes. Paradigm shift. Ooh, what was it? Oathbreaker. That was my favorite deck. Was Jace wielder of mysteries paradigm shift. I, one of my favorite arts in all of Magic. One of the best reserve list cards because everyone looks at it and is like, this is stupid. This card rules. No, I, this card's amazing. When So I, we all have that moment, right, where we went from being like a casual player who didn't really get yeah. cards like this to, to being like somebody who understands synergies like yeah. this. I remember the day I figured out Paradigm Shift as a young person. It was yep. the same day I figured out Mana Severance. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yep. both of those cards. I was just yep. looking at these cards. I was like, these cards have to do so. Oh, that's okay. what they do. These. Yeah. What if I wanted cards not to be at my library <laughs> yeah. anymore? Yep. <laughs> Great. Then this is exactly what I want. Yeah. Yeah. It's I. I love that he picked up that two card. No. Uh, Concordant, Concordant Crossroads. Crossroads is our only world. Strip mine. There we go. Strip Steven got mine. the strip Steven's mine. Steven's doing it. And, and we got the Beast Whisperer Beast out of Whisperer, Mason. Beast Whisperer, of course, the the low. The, the lower cost version of Soul of the Harvest. Yep. The better version. One of the favorites of my podcast co-host. 
A stri- they're in an uproar over strip yeah. mine going this Everyone late, which is freaking out over over a twenty ninth round strip. Yeah, mine. I I just don't understand how it went this late. It's just but here we are. One of those versions of strip mine that looks nice. Yeah, the the, the, the real ones. ones. Come on, give me. Ooh, I do like gold border. Let's just let's just get this. Oh yeah, the 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 mine of death land. Mine of land death. Yeah, it's great. It's the best one by far. I have a couple mines of land death in my collection. No, there we nurturing peat bog. Nurturing peat bog. That's of course that's one of the modern horizons. uh, Whatever. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Nurturing peat land. Nurturing peat land. There That's it is. an interesting choice because so far he hasn't signaled being in green. Yeah, so this is interesting. Um, is it possible? Oh, he's going to hack the crucible. Why wouldn't you just hack the crucible first? Uh, I think you take nurturing peat land. If you do? Uh, no, no, no. I think the reason to take. He has collector oof. That's true. Uh, oh, right. yeah, that's right. He does. You're right. Never mind. Right, right. right. Yeah. But if you wanted to, And Force of Vigor. If, if if I were in front of Steven, and I was going to get two picks, and I wanted to hack the Crucible, I'd I take would take Peatland. something like Nurturing Peatland first. Yeah. Just to style on him a little bit. Yeah. Just to be just to be a rude, a rude yeah. boy. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Prairie Stream going. Prairie. Badlands growing as well. As well. I, that's kind of early for him to pick it, being the only blue-whites... Drafter. Now, this is interesting. Prairie Stream obviously going to come in untapped a lot because yeah. we're going to have a lot of basic lands in our decks. And yeah. it is a Plains Island can be fetched up solid True. card. Yeah. But, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I, I guess it doesn't matter when you take Prairie Stream, Sea Chrome Coast. None of that matters because you're the only yeah. person who cares about it. Yeah, you're the cards. only one in those, but I feel like you could wait and get like... Oh, that's right. Joe's got the Ren and Six. Oh, he does. Yep. Yeah. Yep, 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 okay. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. 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 That makes perfect sense. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot about the Ren and Six. Yeah, the Ren and Six changes things. Badlands Blood Crypt right on right on the wheel there. Yep. I think so. There's an interesting metagame choice of what you take right before the break. What you think people are going to think about. What you yeah. think people are going to look up before the break. People are going to look at this board and realize what lands are, are still yep. available during the Containment break. Containment Priest. Hot. There we go. That is a really good hate piece here. A very, very efficient card. Yep. And other people are going to want that, right? Alex, Alex is going to be interested in that later, yep. so picking that up now is solid. Because I feel like at this point, you know, if I'm Joe, I want stuff that can carry swords and swords. So, Blue Sun Blue Zenith. Blue Sun. I might have taken... Uh, Stealing that from the High Tide player. That's interesting. I might have taken Ram and App Excavator. Yeah. Cursed, Cursed totem. totem. Yes. Ooh, I love that. Recent addition to Modern here. Yep. Um, of course, coming from, I believe, Mirage Visions? Mirage? Uh, Mirage, originally. Yeah, with the... Uh, wow. I so actually like I, this art. I do, too. I, I think it's interesting now, though, because now, why would you ever take Crucible? No, I don't because know. Because St- Steven's the only one that benefits from it, really, unless you want to go Wasteland, but there's not... The The thing is, you don't have entirely non-basic dependent... Yeah, Wasteland is so basics. much worse than Strip Mine in this, uh, in this format, yeah. just because that, uh, that, that, re- that there's so many basics. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and Waterlog Grove there to get some card draw for the Elf deck. So now we have Dan up on the self-mill plan. Uh, yes. And we want to get... Uh, Do we see a, some kind of wheel here? Maybe be, a Piff? Could be Echo. Could be... Oh, yes. Mm. I like Piff a lot here. But I don't know who you're competing against for Piff. Nobody else is going to take your past in flames. Yeah. yeah. Not yet, anyways. Mm. Although we are nearing round 30 where you can start to see people... All right, this is maybe sideboard playable, and it's also kind of a hate pick. And there is Lab Man as well. Seed of the Synod, okay. So we're getting our artifact lands. It's an interesting choice. I guess it does shut off Tinker. We're actually stopping a round too early. Because 30 is actually, round 30 is actually round 29. Oh, yeah, that's true. But it doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's okay. I'm a stickler. This is what I get for being a judge. Dan picks up the seat of the Synod. Solid yeah. choice. Uh, he's going to want that artifact, and he keeps it away from the Tinker player. He d- that's true. It does count as an artifact. That's fair. 
especially with Mopal out there. Yeah. Although I, I'm sure he wishes he had gotten Tezzeret the Seeker. I do want to see if anyone is going to get uh, Agent of Bolus out of this. Yes. Because uh, we don't have... I, I think we've seen it once ever, right? Yes, Tezzeret Agent of Bolus, I think, yeah. one time. I think I drafted it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And now let's see what we get from Brandon. Yeah. Oh, yes, I should pin the row with the, the uh, player names. I was thinking to myself, gosh, I wish that row was pinned, uh, but this is going to be... We're view only. Mark, view please only. pin Mark, it. Mark, pin, pin it. it. Pin it. Pin it. Come on, Mark. Pin it. Repeal. Repeal. Good All pickup. right, that's a solid pickup. Good cantrip for him. Nice removal. If you're Alec here, what are you taking? A clue? <laughs> <laughs> Horizon Canopy, canopy yeah. yeah. We'll fix yeah. it during... Yep. Yeah, like... He is very happy about that He's for hyped. some reason. He's hyped. I'm, I'm not sure what just happened, but we are very, very happy. There we go. We're it's pinned. pinned. Thank Hallelujah. You, there we go. Chatterfang. Chatterfang. We got the squirrel. All right. Let's so play. we're going Squirrelcraft. Are we going Squirrelcraft? I assume we'll go uh, with, with the Earthcraft. Ooh, combo. Hercules Recall out of Brandon and Wish. I have to assume Cunning Wish. Nope, that's Wish. Oh, Wish Wish. Yeah, that is that is Wish from Adventures in the Forgotten Right. Realms. Yep. So that's really spicy. Ooh. That's a... So... With locking in Wish... Dan, Dan has locked in. He, he's locked in his place in my heart. This is this is now my favorite deck in yeah. this draft. Priest yeah. of Titania. Yep. How how does how does Wish work for this? So does it have to be a sideboard card? It's got to be a sideboard right. card, right? It's got to be something that Dan has drafted, or you know, I guess yeah. It's guttural. Gotta, guttural response, or you can get a basic land, right? Yeah. It's limited, so you've got infinite plains, mountain, forest, swamp, island. Root Maze from Joe. That's a really solid one. I, I love, love Root, Root Maze. Maze. What a fantastic hate yeah. card. Artifacts and lands come into play tab, just ready to slow people down. Um, Which is great, because he's got super efficient, cheap beaters and World Gorger Dragon. Yep. Although, World Gorger Dragon, a bit of a non-bow on Root Maze. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, unfortunate. You do not get to uh, take advantage of the lands. So you're going to need some kind of ETB ability to win the game. Yeah. Uh, although, I guess he could go for, like, Mana War and Bounce Root Maze. Mm, that's true. Dovin's Veto. There we go. Yep, I think Dov this might be the latest we've seen it go. Dovin's Veto, he knew he could float it late. Yeah. Um, and I think right before the break, before people check back in with their notes and recenter themselves is the best time to take these cards that yep. you're like... This shouldn't last this long. Yeah. This shouldn't be here... I've been really holding out. Yeah. Which makes me really surprised that we haven't seen Elm of Obedience. Yeah. Guttural response instead and Dovin's Veto. Do we see Helm on the crackback, maybe? I do like Guttural response here, I Yeah, I say. do too. Yeah. I, I think that protection like that, like Veil and stuff, is one of the better things you can do. And of course, if you're really, if, if you get past Veil of Summer and Guttural response, you really need another one. Yes. Library of Alexandria is still up there. Somehow. Yeah, Autumn's Veil Autumn's is Autumn's Veil is the, is the... The OG. The OG, the, 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 worst, the worst of the three. Yeah. But still a card. And then if you really need to go down to, like, Vexing, Shusher, Town, you're in trouble. I like Shusher and EDH. Thought, Thought Erasure. Erasure. Okay. So going for that... Uh... Yes, let's get Swifty yeah. in here. I'll pop out for this one. Great. Um, all right, we're going to hop off stream for a second. We're going to get Andrew Swift in here to talk about uh, this Time Vault deck, and we'll see you all in just a minute. Yep. All right, we're back with uh, with with Andrew Swift, not Jason. I will be uh, fixing that momentarily. <laughs> yeah. Jason's deck's probably more interesting than mine. I mean, Jason's commentating, so his deck his uh, deck's pretty empty. I don't. Okay, it's reading from file, right? I gotta change it somewhere else. So, um, 
you came down here all the way from Chicago, yeah? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. four hour drive ish last night. Nice. Mason slept on the way, so I did all the driving. So you're gonna sleep on the way back, or, you <laughs> the, or, or you're I'm the, the driver? driver. Uh, okay, I know, I know how that is. I just, yeah. I, I did a ten hour, two two ten hour days coming back from Massachusetts this past weekend, and my wife doesn't drive, so uh, I drive, and that's just that's just how the team works. So tell me about um, how this deck came together. Obviously, we started with the time vault, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Time Vault, if I got an early pick, I, spoilers, if I had gotten first pick, I was taking Time Vault over Lotus. Really? So yeah. you th- you value Time Vault that highly? I Lotus is a busted card, and you can do busted things with it. Uh, Time Vault, whenever you draw it, you can just win the game with it. That's so, true, yeah. I, so. I myself played Time Vault the only time I've done a BRD here. Yeah. I played it in BRD2, and, and I came in fifth. I was didn't do so great, but it's it's a very powerful card. I won some some solid games with it. Yeah. So first pick, I wanted to go to Time Vault, and times I've VRD'd before when I've taken Time Vault, I like heavy black, and I wanted to I wanted to go like demonic vampiric as like some of my next two. Right. But then obviously demonic got taken before it got back to me, and the tinker was still sitting there. So I'm like, all right, all right. Guess yeah. we're playing. We'll get into the blue fight. And so since then, it was take Mana Vault, another cheap artifact. I need some more of those to kind of make the Tinker good. But, yep. well, there's a bunch of cheap artifacts that are fine Yeah, that I can play, take later. And after that, it was just blue cards are good. Yeah. <laughs> Oko, uh, Force, all that good stuff. Yeah, and you've got, the, you've got kind of the white backup plan here as well to keep control of the game. Yep. You've got Stoneforge Mystic as well with the Cauldron, which I really like. Um, in terms of your later picks, what are you... Is the door closed? Uh, the door's not all the way shut. Oh, I'm, no. not gonna, I'm not going to ask you about your plan until the door is all the way closed. Hang on. Secrets. So as far as future picks, right, when we get to this, like, 31 to 45 area, what kind of stuff are you looking to pick up? Later? So, like, it's... I'm not doing anything crazy this draft. It's going to be some more sideboard cards. There's a lot of cre- decks that care about creatures right now. Mm-hmm. So I need, I want some more anti-combo shenanigans with like Alex deck where he's going creature combo mm-hmm. or uh, the reanimator. Yep. Um, You've got the swords. I've got the swords. Uh, path still on the table. So that's an easy pickup at some point. Uh then there's like two stormy decks, mm-hmm. uh, so I plan to grab Archon of Emeria at some point, probably soon, because I don't know what kind of like these white hate bear creatures that Alec is gonna take. Right, he might so take any of those. That's kind of why I'm like I'm having to grab like this Containment Priest now and yeah, that was all a good that. Pickup. So th- that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, uh, just grabbing these sideboardish cards because my main deck's pretty good at this point maybe some more fixing even though the only green card i need to play is oko yeah but still you can get i mean oko's great that. oko make oko makes my artifacts i can tinker away oh 100 percent. yeah oko makes some food and you can tinker those away <coughs> pardon me what kind of, what what card are you surprised hasn't been picked up yet is there anything on the table that you're like this this should not be happening uh wasteland like the strip mine going this late was insane. The wasteland's still there. Yeah. yeah. So obviously the the delta between strip mine and wasteland is, is, is right, pretty big, but, but still, still it's still a great card. Yeah, we were all commenting out there. It's like Alec, you took fast on second, and the strip you didn't get the strip mine that went so late. We were surprised not to see uh, strip mine end up in Alex's deck as yeah, well. Stephen so. picking that up was a pretty big coup. So that's very interesting. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to say about your deck? It looks, I mean, again, it looks sweet so far. You've got a really solid list. It looks, it looks solid, and that's what I can. I think it'll have game against everything. It'll, I've got disruption. Maybe yep. one a little more, but there's a million cheap two mana counters. So, yep. yeah, there's, uh, there's there's availability there. Exactly. So I'm not worried. Um, like I said, it's my job is just to have game against everything. I'm not going to be winning on turn one, but yeah. I love the lose focus pickup, by the way. I thought that was really great. That yeah, I I was debating between that and miscalc. I just wanted like a cheap two mana counter that also just had the utility. Yeah. Whether it was cycling or just the replicate that ability. late game availability to be able to just tap out and say, all right, right well here's my here's my uh, power sink effectively, right? Exactly. Well, very so. cool. All right. Well, this this looks like it's coming together very well. I'm excited to see how this how it goes for you in the gameplay. Or you know, is there who if, if, if it wasn't you, 
Other, other than yourself, who do you think is best positioned? I guess my last good question. Who's best position? I I really love Steven's deck. I really wanted. I had the uh, Chain of Smog Witherbloom Apprentice on like my list if I went uh, like a black base time vault. Mm-hmm. So I'm I really hoping Steven does well. Yeah, Steven's got a good eye for those that two card Monty type of strategy yeah. with those two card combo decks. He's done that here in the past, and I think he may be very successful with it today. Well, thank you, Andrew. Oh, thanks this- for having me. I can't wait to play. Yeah, we're really excited to have you here. All right, folks, we're going to take another break. We'll be back soon.
activate. All right, so I am back. I have here with me former VRD champion Elaine. Hi. So, how's Hi, it going? Everybody. What's up? Man, okay. So, looking at the spreadsheet, right? Yeah. Where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I think so... one of the most contested picks was strip mine going so late. What do you think about that? Oh, my God. <laughs> 29. Uh, 29th round. Okay, okay. I'm just going to go through starting with John Ryan, right? Okay, yep. Um, so, who was the reigning champion at first pick? I'm sorry, but what? <laughs> Mark, Mark randomed it, and his name yeah, came up uh -huh, first. Uh-huh, uh-huh, sure. So, uh -huh, totally. that's, that's where we're at. Oh, my God. Okay, so, I'm surprised that he went for this, to be honest, because... I don't, like, John Ryan in the past, like, has expressed disdain for A plus B decks, like, yeah. in general. Yeah, it's never been his thing. Well, sure, but, um, so, I thought that he was gonna go for, like, something like green, white, whatever thing. Mm -hmm. Um, th this is obviously not that. It's, and obviously he wants to have the reanimate and the other thing that was stolen, the animate dead. Yeah, animate dead. He is still fine, I think. Like show and tell when you are playing reanimator isn't really that much of a pivot, right? Like no. he doesn't actually have a whole lot of ways to like get things into his graveyard. So it's just like you know, the thing plus like giant fatty plus way to get it into play. It's still like. Kind of the same. Fine, thing. yeah. Like, it's fine. It's because you're still cheating giant fatties no matter what. It's just how. And the right. fact that I think he's also especially fine because nobody else is really in red, so there's no danger of, like, sneak attack or through the breach or anything being taken, you know? Is. Oh, there's an Arlequinist and a channel art, but that's not really right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, not sorry. the same slot. Yeah. Um, and um, I, I was talking to him about it, and he actually said, you know, he was fine with the hate draft because there's a million ways to reanimate stuff. You know, like Necromancy, obviously, Exhum. He's got plenty of options. Sure, they may not be as good as reanimate, but he feels like this this pod is slow enough that he doesn't have to do a turn two every time. It is pretty slow, yeah. That is something I've noticed. Um, but... The other thing is that, like, there isn't, like, a control deck, right? And obviously, like, that's a function of, I might have been draft, so there isn't a control deck. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> a lot of these combo decks just kind of hold to literally any interaction. Yeah. And I think people think, oh, I guess we're just starting. All right. Yeah, looks no, like looks like we're starting. starting. Or okay. will be soon. Everyone's sitting down, it looks like. Okay. Sorry, you were saying? Um, Like, a, a lot of these combo decks... The reason I don't like them is because they just kind of fold to any interaction, mm -hmm. but there isn't a whole lot of interaction being picked. Um, like, obviously, like, there are counter spells that are picked, but you can go extremely deep on counter spells. Yeah. Without, like, oh, there's a pack rat. Pack that rat. I like. That's the John Ryan that I'm familiar with. Yeah, that is a great you know, pick. He, is, he has a very good plan B here. Yeah. And... Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I really like this. Um, so Andrew's deck, I think, is interesting. It's kind of being pulled in a bunch of different directions, which I think is weird. What Andrew really wants to see here, Andrew wants to pick up, like, random artifacts. Like, just, you know, you want artifact lands, you want bobbles, you want, like, stuff like that. Stuff that he can like, animate with Tez. Yeah. You just need, like, random things. Like, not... Like, you need to have a critical artifact count in order to play... I think he's playing Tinker, right? He is. Yeah. He's on the it Tinker is. Time Vault plan. Yeah. In, in, inevitable Betrayal. What? Yeah. What is this card? Suspend. Search target opponent's library for a creature oh. and put that onto the battlefield. Oh. Okay. 
That is I, interesting. That is, because he's Joe's basically on like Delver splashing world gorger. Yeah. Um. I wonder. Okay. So this is. <clears throat> I mean, marginally better than bribery. It still like casts on turn five, but you spend your turn three for it. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Uh, we ended up with our eight participants, uh, and we have four of us running logistics. Yep, it's just one eight-man is all we have. So, yeah, Inevitable Betrayal I like because he doesn't have a lot of ways to deal with some of the bigger threats that are being presented by some of the other decks. So, honestly, if you're casting that as, like... Oh, I like that. Oh, I like Azuri yeah, a lot so in that list. Mason's deck here, honestly, like, this is, like... In the past, I haven't had, I haven't much liked a lot of these non blue decks, but like yeah. these like green space decks. But this green space deck, this is what it needs to look like. Yeah, I think. Brandon has. He got bitter or deal. Bitter or deal. He did. It's, it's, He's. I mean, it's never worked. It's never worked. Like... It's not going to stop him. You know him. Uh, oh he's God. he's on blue black mill this time so he's gonna pick his you know his pet card he said after uh hideous laughter got printed he's like it's finally time so <laughs> it's a shame you're not here to see it uh all call that makes sense ronas ronas is a good one yeah so Benzelinski does this every single time where he picks like a reasonable control deck and then like goes way off the deep end yeah. <laughs> with like some absurd A plus B deck. Like yep. it was Infect, there was the Splinter Twin, and now it's what is this? Like this is this is Doomsday, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I he he, he said that's what he went for. Was everyone like pick seventeen? He said, you know, like thought scour all of his cantrips and like the control cards that he wanted got yeah. taken. So he said, all right, I'm gonna audible into mono blue doomsday, and uh, you know, with wheels and as many flashback wheels as I can get. So it's okay. it's literally exactly what you described is what happened okay. to him this but draft. This is audibly, he knew what he was doing going in because he <laughs> always does this. Yeah. Like first pack, pick all the good, blue, like generically good blue cards, and then whatever this is. Okay, you want to? I'm sure that's a better kind of spell in the pool than crunch right now. Uh, there's definitely like, a better spell than rune snag. <laughs> but rune snag is four counter spells, so like. I, I think that's interesting. Oh, that's format, fair, right? yeah. Yeah. Um, is... Okay, we'll, let's take a look. Um, I don't know if any of the players figured out that Library of Alexandria is still on the board at this I'm point. I'm not convinced that card's... I, I don't... Good? I, I think it's great in Vintage Cube. I don't know that it's good in Vintage Rotisserie Draft. Yeah. Uh, Shadow of Doubt, for Steven, I think is... Interesting right, for right. him. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, I actually do think, like, if you look further up on the spreadsheet, like, there isn't a whole lot of... There aren't a whole lot of sideboard cards, and I think mm -hmm. that's something that... Miscalc is still there. That's got to be better than Quench. Right. Um, Miscalc, I think, is taken. Miscalc is, it? is... No, it's not. Huh? Yeah, so Miscalc... Isn't taken. A complicate isn't taken. Um, okay, and Caterberg just chimed yeah. in. They only get one copy of Rune Snag, not four. Oh, okay. Tarmogoyf. All right, so we are just straight Rug Delver. Yeah, that I think is a pretty good deck here. Um, I like that Regisaur pick a lot for John. I like that a lot. Writing Regisaur. I think he should be taking. Um, Legion War Boss and Ken. Yeah. Um. At, I, I've never, I've never been high on, on Registrar, so I understand that it kills people extremely quickly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it does pitch <clears throat> your fatties. But yeah. Oh, echoing true. That's really good. Because we have a squirrel player. There's no chain of. Vapor. Oh, the squirrel. Eh. Yeah. It's also just a nice catch-all. Like answer any permanent if you need, and there's the Urza Saga finally. Yeah, which that, long that, overdue. I think he could have 
like it makes sense that he would do that because there isn't another deck that really wants it but no. also like I'm tempted to just take it, like, in your random other deck and just, like, get your locks or yeah, something. Yeah, it's, it's right? that like, good. Okay, you're so yeah. And I, I'm surprised that that hasn't happened. No, and I, I kind of figured that Dan would end up taking it after he ended up with the Jace Paradigm Shift before Seed. Yeah. Um, but then he ended up taking okay. Seed and, you know, Wish Wish. Yeah. So something I find interesting about a lot of these drafts is that a lot of the newer players they end up having decks where they have like 27 to 28 like main deck cards mm -hmm. and they you know might be a little bit short on lands I, I think like obviously you don't need non-basics but like if you look at all of my previous VRD decks they have like nine non-basics yeah like, they have quite a few decks and I think that that's just what people should be doing. So if you figure, like, you know, you have 45 picks, you pick 24 main deck cards, 9 non-basics, um, and then, like, 7 sideboard cards that can reasonably come in, that's already 40 cards. Like, yeah. you don't actually have a lot of space at the bottom of this draft to, like, pick up cards to finish out your deck. Yeah. And I think that that's, that is a trap that a lot of, like, new players fall into, is that they waste so much of this pack two and early pack three on um, like cards that they might play and then end up not playing yeah so it's so i think it'd be very interesting to see what happens there um in terms of like like i think there are definitely decks here that have two, that are going to have too many main deck cards i agree and either like <clears throat> And if that means that, like, they don't have as many non-basics as they should have, like, that's not a big deal. But if you're missing sideboard cards, like, this is a face-up draft, right? Like, yeah. you know you, you what have... you're playing against, and you should have sideboard cards for everybody. You have perfect information, so there's no reason not to sideboard appropriately. Yeah. And it's, oh, there's expressive iteration. Wait, wasn't that already taken? Uh, expressive iteration was not taken. Oh, interesting. Wait, Narsec Protogos was taken before two Moxen? Yes. Jesus. Yeah, well, it... I don't think this is correct. <laughs> as much as I like Narset, I don't think that's correct. Yeah. Um, there, there, yeah, we talked about it, and there was a... There was an interesting bit where Alec took Mox Pearl, eighth overall, when Emerald was available, and then on the turnaround got Fast Bond. He evidently had marked off on his list, because he's using his phone... He had marked off that Emerald was already taken by mistake. Oh, oh no. But didn't realize until he cracked Fast Bond, at which point, you know, there's no way. Oh, sorry. Um, so we get a Recruiter of the Guards. So I think Alec just looks like he's taking Vizier combo, right? It makes sense, right? Like, you have this, like, reasonable mid-range, this reasonable, like, mid-range deck, and then, like, you just backdoor into this combo. That makes sense. Um, is there a collected company here? There is, is a collected name? company for the elves player. Oh, which, so it's been taken. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I do think it's interesting that a lot of these decks are a lot more fair than what we usually see at these VRDs. Yeah, I don't think that's... Like, especially our pod. Yeah, because it's like you're usually on a fair deck when you're here. John tends to be on some form of fair deck. But other than that, everyone tries to get, like you said, these A plus B decks. And it's going to be interesting to see all of these fair decks try to duke it out to see who's the best at being fair. I mean, the problem with these A plus B decks is that you just will straight up lose to, like, if you don't have disruption. Which yeah. I don't think Alec does have a whole lot of. He does not. Right? Like... I want to see a barrel summer or like a return to nature. Yeah. Or something like that, right? Um, which I don't think either of those have been taken. No. Uh, Vale oh, was. There yeah. Is a barrel summer. Yeah, Vale's yeah. taken. Uh, I think it's interesting. I was talking to Mason um, 
a, who's one of the people that came down from Chicago, and he said one of his favorite VRD strategies, and this is something I've noticed you do as well, he likes drafting early, efficient, splashable, black, proactive interaction, and then audibling yeah. into whatever deck forms from there. I think the black interaction is way underrated. Yeah. Um, part of it is just that, like, you know, one, if you have information on what your opponent um, has, like, what's in your, in your opponent's hand, if they're, like, trying to do anything, you just, like, have it planned out, right? Yeah. The other thing that, like, I am noticing here about this, though, is that the black interaction goes deeper than what he has picked. Like, yeah. what's the one thought sees that was out of Garros to play two mana? Uh, not digress. Uh, uh, Despise? No, no, it costs two, and it's like... No, yeah, that um, was cons. Oh, we finally... I, 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 I could... It's, it's agonizing, but more. Yes. So that card is the fourth best thought sees in magic. Yeah. Um, which I think is something that like a lot a lot of people don't think of because like the fourth best effect is not an effect that you will see in any constructed format. No, not but at all. But here in you are. That is really important, right? Like that could have seen play in standard, sure, but like you can go really deep on this, this sort of stuff. And same with the counter spells, right? Like, the, like, third or fourth best counter spell won't see play in Constructed. But yeah. you you can pick up, like, you can go fairly deep on, uh, on a lot of this. Yeah. Someone in um, chat said they think Grief is better. Which I, I don't necessarily disagree with. Oh, a Sedgemore Witch. Playing, I think you have to be playing an Unfair Act in order yeah. for Grief to be good. Um, Did you see what John Ryan just picked? Sedgemore Witch? Which... That makes sense, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, li I like that card a lot. That card's seen constructed play. It's in vintage. Yeah. Right? Like, I like it a lot for his deck as well. Oh, okay. John Ryan showing true mastery of this format here. Like, yeah. really just... Oh, he's in there this saying that card was on the board for way too long. It should have been gone rounds ago. <laughs> Solitude. I, I've been impressed by how much Modern Horizons 2 has shown up. Yeah. Um, Solitude, I think it's good. Yeah. Um, he's the only one think, in white. I don't think the white card count in that deck is enough. We've got Solitude. Solitude, Path, Archon, Dovin's Veto, Containment Priest. Apparition, Fragmentize, Stoneforge, Swords, Rip. It looks like he's getting his white cards now. He's got most of his blue out of the way early. Okay. Deluge, I like that a lot. Mm. Joe. That interesting. Um, well, he I... already has Needle, so it's interesting that he chose a second effect like that, because I feel like you really only need one in this format. Yeah. Spyglass is definitely the better one. I agree. Um... Also, I don't tend to like for, like um, effects that say name a card because it's a singleton format, and yeah. generally the cards are fairly replaceable. I mean, obviously, like if you're bringing it in against um, Time Vault, like Time Vault, that card is not re replaceable. Like yeah, sure. but for sure, that um, I'm not positive. Although I'm waiting now for Mason to get a kill condition because we've got Arch Druid, we've got Circle of Dreams Druid, we've now got Wirewood Symbiote. He's oh, already. He can... He can... Oh, he has Crater Hoof. Kill conditions super late. Yeah, like, and he did get Crater Hoof. Order... Oh, there is a natural order Crater Hoof. Yeah. Very green. Okay, so so, so the green sun. I think like um, he has um, the one thing that. Uh... He's no, got someone else took out Sword Shepherd. Um, okay, and then Dan finally got the Lab Man. Yeah. I do think that the deck that Solinsky is playing is a lot more fragile than what I yeah. used to seeing from him. 
All right, um, so there, so there I mean, is Brandon's so favorite Star Wars movie. He's gonna help, obviously. Yeah, for sure. He's definitely got the speed to be able to crank out wheels. Um, I played Ten Wheels for a little bit in Vintage, and I loved it. So I'm excited to see how it does in VRD. Uh, of course, I don't know if you saw. Brandon just took his favorite card in all of Magic, Altar of the Brood. So, uh, are you sure it's not? Um... Bitter ordeal. It might be bitter ordeal. They're both up there, and Alec, it looks like just Man, got disrespecting me by misspelling Thada Adele, and also <laughs> having to go in pack three. Like this, like Thada Adele is so busted in this archetype. It is. It, oh, sorry, it's so busted in this format. Mm -hmm. And uh come on, like. Duskwatch Recruiter, Narset's Reversal. There's our first talisman going this late. I'm I was surprised that the land run happened as early as it did, but we haven't had the artifact colored mana run. Have you would you have expected it before what is this, round thirty seven? Yeah, I mean it's weird because I think that ordinarily VRD is fast enough format that you don't necessarily want a lot of the signet effects. Yeah. Um, with that being said, I think it makes sense here, but also, like, Jezulinski, like, you have a lot of two mana counter spells. Like, on turn two, are you going to leave up a, a counter spell or play a talisman, right? Like, it, it kind of goes in two different directions. Yeah. And I think especially in this format, even the fair version of the format that we're seeing here, two mana and turn two is so impactful oh, when yeah, you have absolutely. cards like Tarmogoyf, Dark Confidant, stuff like that that pop up, that you almost like don't want to play any of the Dark two Confidant mana rocks. Went, went pick 34? Yes. What, what is... I, St <laughs> Steven, what is Steven has himself a deck over there. Oh, and Steven's deck is pretty... And, and nobody has taken Helm yet. Despite Rest in Peace and Voidwalker and Leyline going as early as they did, we still don't have anyone on Helm. This this is like mind-boggling to me that it's taken so, that long. What Steven wants right now is some way to protect his combo. Yeah. Um, or some way to tutor out his combo. Well, he has uh, Demonic and Imp Seal. That he took in uh, two and three. I don't know if that's enough. I, I'm not sure either. And protection-wise, he did end up with Defense Grid, and he has the Veil of Summer. But again, I'm not sure if that's Veil enough. Veil of Summer doesn't, like, your creatures it, still die. Yeah, exactly. It just protects, it yeah. It does not a whole lot of counter spells, right? Like, that's no. Not... But there's also not a lot of removal that's been taken so far. He's got probably... Him and Andrew, I think, have the most removal. Oh, Andrew yeah. taking Mind Stone. That's the, uh... I guess it does replace yeah. itself, and since he's in the Tezzeret deck, he definitely wants that. Yeah. There's the Elish Norn for John Ryan. Mm -hmm. Snuff out. A classic. Oh. I, I guess it answers Containment Priest. I wonder if there's a better effect here. Yeah, I'm not sure if this the free is why he wanted it when something like Go for the Throat is still out there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it makes sense. I don't think the life totals are going to be under too much threat. No. Except from, like, maybe Joe. Yeah. Or Ch Alec. Yeah. Um, Chain of April, interesting. I like that pick a lot. That seems a little bit late. But I'm also super high on catch anything Dark removal. Dark pathway. I assume that that's just like the green black pathway. Yeah, that's the green black one. Has has overgrown too? Is overgrown too taken? It is. Yeah, it um, is. What about? Uh, Lanowar waste is still there. Little, little, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. I no. actually am fairly high on temples in this format. And I'm surprised that we haven't seen a whole lot of those. Actually, we've seen none of those. No. I like temples a lot in this format, because your turn one usually is free mana anyways. 
So if you don't have a two mana play that immediately impacts the game, you lead with a temple and you get a little bit of filtering. I think it's on the upside, yeah. you know. Yeah, uh, and, and like because the decks have like, I mean, because the decks have single attend, like, yeah. Uh, like, and as hyphenated said, enlightened tutor is available too. So there are ways that he can get, or there are ways that uh, Andrew could get combo pieces if he does opt for helm. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. But yeah, I I think that those non basics. Oh, okay. oh, that's good. The non basics like that that see so little constructed play really get a chance to shine in this format because it is so fast. Yeah. There's a. What's the name of the uh, fast? Uh, Blooming Marsh? Yes. Is that. That, that, is, been taken, that right? has not like, been taken. I think Canal is the only fast land that's been taken. Yeah. Like, there is. You can go really deep on these gold lands. Yeah. Um. Okay, so Dan took Is It Signet there, which feels real bad since he didn't end up with Tezzeret. So still not a whole lot of side of like sideboard cards. Like no, I, I want to see things that are like truly absurd. Like I, I, I want to see Acid Ray. I want to see Norod. Yeah. Like I want to see Norod was cards. taken, but I think uh, by Steven. Okay, that was Norod taken pretty Steven. early. That was taken before Strip Mine. For some reason, <laughs> I will never understand how Strip Mine lasted that long. Okay, I, I want. People to take um, what's it called? Uh, I, I want so like an energy flush just pick thirty four, but like there's plenty of other effects like that, right? Like, yeah. I I, I want to see is, is there a plague engineer? There's no plague there's engineer no yet. Plague, there's no plague engineer. Like, no. That's not even a sideboard card, to be quite honest. Like, that's no, it's it's effective. efficient enough to be main boardable with just some upside against tribal. I mean, that card's yeah. great. I mean, that kind of depends on what the decks end up shaping up like. Like, for example, it's not good against John Ryan, right? Like, no, for sure. But it's it's good against Alec. It's good against Mason. It's also just an efficient beater. And he was telling me at the break he wanted more creatures to attack with. Mm -hmm. He's recognized, like, I have all these two-card combos, but I'm kind of light on tutoring. I'm kind of light on card draw. So I need to be able to attack. And yeah. that's... Plague Engineer is one of the most efficient creatures they've printed in the last five years. Card's great. I, I want to see a Wrath of God. And there's a Twilight Mire. Yet, yeah, has... Oh, someone was saying Supreme Verdict should be taken by Andrew, which I agree with because he's the only blue-white player. Um, but he's not super pressured to take it. That's only relevant if he has Force Effects, which he does have the Force of Negation. Yeah. Uh, because I don't think the Uncounterable is going to come out. No, probably not. But we also, I don't think, have anything that would generates we do have some persist but i yeah, think but it's easier to cast I think yeah, oh yeah significantly yeah types. yeah and there's a twilight mire for steven so he's starting to get some of the non-utility lands Ooh, ice fang yeah i thought yeah i do too is there an arrow there's no arrow nope not yet i think that'd be yeah we don't have an arrow we have an oko but no Uro, which is surprising. Because uh, that card is just up there with Oko in terms of power level, in my opinion. Oh. I want to say more removal out of Joe. I, I do too. Right now, I don't see any. I bolt. see an, a, a Bolt in an, in an Unholy Heat. Um, Force of Vigor as well, but that's. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't really count. There's a lot of creatures floating around. Like, there's a lot of creatures. You want yeah. more than that. Um, you can get Chain Lightning. You can get... Um, honestly, it's just like Pyroclasm, right? Like, might be good. Pyroclasm so, would be insane in this. In this particular draft. I think it's very, very good. Yeah, like... Uh, Clearwater Pathway. So we've now seen... Before a single Pain Land was taken... We saw four or five. You. Oh, okay. For I those... think the Sage was like an interesting pick, but like in what's going on in this draft, we don't know if it's such a. I mean, it protects his show and tell, which is nice. Um, right, but like. Necro doesn't have colorless, so it doesn't protect that. It protects some of your reanimation spells, I guess. 
Um, yeah. I mean, it protects it, but also the, the kind of spell count in this draft isn't super high. No, it's not, surprisingly. Um, that's that's one of the reasons I, I'm surprised we have so many fair decks and fewer A plus B decks, uh, is because that does just seem like such a good environment for to have those A plus B decks do well. Although I guess you can kind of Brandon is kind of an A plus B deck. It's kind of hard to hard to say. Uh, so what is all? All is dust. No, I think the all is came from. The, yeah. The, the oh, so, so it is. Yep. Is yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. All is sheltered. So what does Andrew get here? He's got a decent... Does Do you want more than Cauldre Complete for a Stoneforge target? Hushbringer, I like that a lot. I've never been high on Stoneforge in this format because, like, if you have a Stoneforge and then you have multiple equipment, like, mm -hmm. the odds are that you'll... The odds are that more likely than not you're going to draw your equipment before you draw your Stoneforge. And yeah. then just having equipment in your hand without Stoneforge kind of sucks. Yeah. But it's not like it wins the game, right? Like... No. I can accept, like, combo cards that go in an A plus B combo that win the game. Yeah, for sure. But Stoneforge do doesn't really do that. If you could have four Stoneforges, then yeah, sure, that'd be amazing. Okay, but... so now Steven's getting his lands, it looks like. He's There's got the, the Pathway, the Mire, the Llanowar Wastes. Mm -hmm. He's doing it. Yeah, that, that was good hyphenated. All is sheltered. Um... I'm not super high on these Pathways. I The fact that the Pathways aren't fetchable is one of the reasons that I'd rather get a pain land. Especially because in this format, pick. life total doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Because I feel like the pathways, especially, you know, the bark channel, it, Andrew could have waited on. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have elves going now. Also, I, I want to say triumphs. Like... The fact that we haven't had any triumphs yet, because we do have a couple decks that are, like, Mason is clearly in three colors here with the Llanowar Elves and the Leovold. Um, right. It's bad, but even, like, the uh, Lara Tapnets, like, those uh, triumphs are fetchable. Like, that's insane. Yeah. Misty and Misty. Uh, see, uh... Because Mari Command. Yeah, that's Makes not a sense. card. Is it? Did I misspell it? I misspelled it. Because Mari with an R. I, that's why. Yep. Um. Yeah, so he's he's leaning more into the spells archetype now, which I think is good. Arcane denial, that's an interesting choice. Oh, Zelensky there. has the whole creature. He does. So good. Oh my yeah. god. Okay, yeah. so my evaluation of how this tech builds just went up immensely. <laughs> okay, like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was already good, but now it's like insane. Yeah. Uh, I kind of expected him to splash back just to have, like, Notion Thief and go for the Demonic Consultation Thassa. That would make sense. Um, but I, the fact that there's so few people in blue-black means he can probably wait on that. But it is, you know, if he wanted to go all in on that, that's an extra way that he can go all in on the, like, Thassa's Oracle Doomsday type combo there. Mm -hmm. Display of Dominance. And Heroic Intervention. The Heroic Intervention's a weird one there. Because there's no Wraths that have been taken yet. Yes, but there should be. Oh yeah, there's, there should be for sure. And I guess it does prevent the Elves player from picking it up on... You know, if a Wrath gets taken by Andrew, then Mason's going to have the pick before Alec would. Display mm -hmm. of Dominance I like there. Because it's at least protection, but I feel like... Alex kind of out of removal options because we've got Path, Swords, Prismatic are all gone. I guess he could O-Ring. Brandon was trying to go all in on Blue Black Mill, but we'll see. Because he's got Drown in the Lock, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and Fractured Sanity. I don't know what else he could really... I mean, he I needs Glimpse. Takes, like, could be good. Um, I want to see... I don't see Visions of Beyond. Yeah, there's no Visions of Beyond. I really hope he takes it. I love that card so much. I will make no apologies for it. It's so bad. I mean, it's but, good here, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's good in this exact instance. But, like, I just love the card. <laughs> it's a 
Yeah. yeah. He's he's got a decent mill list. He does. And he ended up with but the. But uh... importantly, he has a good blue shell for his mill. <laughs> yeah, it's which is not something I ever thought I would say about Brandon was that Brandon had a good blue shell because first off he's not a blue player at all. Uh, so I I was I am floored by that. Quicken. Hmm. Um, interesting. I like so, his energy flux, but Quicken is an odd choice here. So, Quicken... A Metamorphos. Quicken, a... Uh, I don't understand what that does. Metamorphos is interesting. Well, I think he's kind of half in on the storm plan, because he did pick up that Empty the Warrens earlier. Yeah, which, like, that's the thing with empty. Like, you empty for four, and it still wins the game. Yeah, I, you don't have to do a whole lot. So, like, cantrip, manamorphos, empty, or, you know, wish for empty, high tide. Sure, great. You know, four is eight tokens, which I think a lot of people forget. Or even just, like, bait your opponent into interacting and giving it, your free stone count. Right? Yeah. Like, just so many things. Quicken does help balance your books. Ooh, Thrun out of Joe. And then we have a Witherbloom command. I would want to see Uro out of Joe. I think that makes a lot of sense here. Yeah. I especially if he's picking up a Thrun, I think Uro's a much better threat. Um I I like Thrun, granted that there is a blue white player who's stacking mm -hmm. like all of the best removal as a sideboard option. It, and he's not really competing. Require... It does require a decent color commitment though. Well, it also requires, like, a decent spell density in order to fill up your graveyard. Yeah. Tangle Root um, Bridge, okay. The color requirement, like, assuming that he, like, has... Actually, he doesn't have a whole lot of fixing, because... No, he yeah, does like, not. Yeah. Huh. Makeshift Mannequin, that is one of my favorite reanimate spells. So, Massacre is the first pyroclasm effect we get. It's actually going to be interesting to see how the Stelver deck operates without a lot of the lands that you want. Yeah. Um, just because, like... He's got... So much of Delver is duels. about card efficiency. Mm -hmm. And if you, like, have too many basics on the field, you just can't really do that. No. Like, he's got Taiga... And trop. He has and a Wait, he has... does he have the trop? No. Um, no, he doesn't. Mason sorry. Yeah, Mason uh, has a trop. Yeah, it's volcanic so taiga. Taiga. I don't uh, think. He... Yeah. That looks like it. But he... like, yeah, like this is one of those things, right? Where it's like. He didn't end up with a shock land. Like he's got pain lands, maybe, but it is like you said. It's such. An efficient deck that ev you have to have everything available to you in the right amount all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons the duels are so important. That's that great. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's one of the things that I think you see from a lot of the people who haven't drafted VRD before is that you end up with decks that are don't have as many dual lands as you could. Yeah. Or you're, you're missing decks without like specific hate cards for opponents that you would other that you're gonna struggle with yeah um like if joe faces like alec like i don't think that looks like a horrendous matchup yeah right? i don't because, i don't like, think he can win that like sure if i land root maze i guess i delay the inevitable a turn when he combos off but that doesn't yeah, really that. Like, yeah that doesn't whatever. do a lot oh and like, steven ending up with questing beast no but even then like just you have big Features like they have a decent mid range plan that just beats yeah. the other Yeah, Questing Beast makes a lot of sense here. Yeah, I like Questing Beast a lot in this format. Uh, maybe better than True Name. Uh, I am surprised we still haven't seen Dress Down. At all. That hmm. might that might be something I'd expect maybe Andrew to end up with. Um. If Andrew ends up taking an extra piece of equipment, I feel like that's a much better plan. 
What is my Dolphin Hint of Control? Come on, guys. Like, <laughs> I love that card so much. Realm Walker, for those of you that don't know, that. is a changeling, so it buffs his elves. Oh, Scepter. Dan is going, is he going for Scepter Dramatic Reversal? He's got the mana for it. It makes sense, yeah. Yeah, because I guess he could go for Brain Freeze, or not, sorry, not Brain Freeze, uh, Brain Geyser, since Blue Sun Zenith is taken already. But there's plenty of those effects. It, like, yeah, really exactly. The, the only thing blue sun has is that it shuffles back in um glimpse so finally getting that unearth there's one of our wait have we still not had miscalculation taken miscalc has not been taken i that is mind-boggling to me i complicate. have to complicate complicate one of my pet um like i don't spells also yep. been taken. i love complicate Loaming Shaman, okay. I I think actually, yeah, Library of Alexandria may just not get drafted this time. I don't think it's good. Yeah. Like Hex we, we talked a lot about how much you need the 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 dual lands because you want to be able to fulfill your, your color requirements. Yeah. And I think that just doesn't yeah, there's the reverse, so that makes sense. Yep. Get Aether Flex Reservoir. Do it, do it. Yeah, Hex Drinker not being taken is another one that surprises me, because it is, like, especially, again, granted, perfect information. We know that there's a few fair decks that may have, like, a combo win or something, but by and large, there's decks that are, like, Delver, the Control deck, Steven's deck. Elves can get you, but it also wants to swing in the meantime. Like, there's these decks that operate on a fair game plan. Hex Drinker just seems so good in that meta. Oh, yeah. And, like, there, there, a lot of... The, the removal that I think should have been taken hasn't been taken. I'm st I'm still I am still amazed that cards like uh, what is it, Anguished on Making and Vindicate haven't been taken. There's no fatal push. Yeah, no fatal push. This, th which to me is one of the most like one of the best pieces of removal in this format outside of like Prismatic Ending and Swords. I I just don't yeah. understand it. But there's no push, and we're on there's pick no forty three. I don't see an eliminate. Um, mm -hmm. I don't see. Yeah, Maze yeah, of Ith probably should get taken. A lot of effects. That's one of the reasons that I like the Cryptic Command pick from Brandon is because a lot of these decks do attack, and when they do, sleep effects are incredibly powerful if you're on a slower game plan. Mm -hmm. But also, it's cryptic command. I mean, yeah, I mean, also, it. yes, it is cryptic <laughs> command. Like, that's that's going to be good regardless. I just like that pick, to be fair, yes. Sure. Um, Mega yeah. That makes sense. There we go. Okay. We were saying he would probably be the one that took it eventually. Yeah. So Stasis. We are locking in deck lists for game one, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so when that happens, I think it's going to be very interesting to see, like, how many cards um a lot of these players have that like look like main deck cards but didn't make the cut yeah and aren't really sideboard cards no like that's kind of i think one of the things that comes with experience in this format yeah um, Ooh, divert. divert divert and grave nice. titan i love grave totally titan in this titan. format grave titan's castable too yeah it is Especially in this format, which is a little bit slower mm -hmm. than normal. Um, but yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of those cards, like you said, that are main that are main deck cards that are going to end up in your sideboard that aren't good enough to be a sideboard card. You know, they're, they're a card that's in your main deck for game one, like an Enlightened Tutor, for example. When are you going to side an Enlightened Tutor? It also, like... Even John Ryan, like, John Ryan doesn't have the land the like non-basic density that i expected from him yeah he um, he's a lot like, higher on spells than he usually is because he's like you he's one that usually he has nine to ten non-basics right but he can't play all of these no he like steam vents underground sea like he's not gonna play all of those you know well those he will, Th those like, those he yeah. will yeah but like he's picking blood crypt and badlands and i don't think he plays all of those but who knows? He 
he's he's one I have not. So, uh, Chronotog. So we're we're actually going all in on the stasis plan. That is amazing. Wait, from so Joe. How does this work? So Chronotog with stasis out, you skip your turn with stasis out. So they skip their untap, and mm -hmm. you basically skip ten turns, attack. Or just skip enough turns that they deck themselves and you have blockers back. Oh, Steven finally got the helm. It... says you skip. Oh yeah, sorry, you use this only one. once. Yeah, 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 sorry. So how do you win? So you skip a turn, they draw, they don't get to play anything because stasis, and you basically just lock them out, swinging with a 4-5. It was a deck that was good in the 90s uh -huh. when stasis and Chronotog first got printed. And don't like, they eventually draw out of the, 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 the stasis because they can draw lands and play them. Yes, correct. Right? Which is why you don't do it every turn necessarily. Uh -huh. Sometimes you do want the extra turn to draw. Typically, you would one run Winter Orb with it as well, so that if huh. they somehow answer the stasis or something, you'd have an extra lock piece. That makes sense. Huh. Yeah, Helm this late is surprising. Linvala, ooh, Reality Shift. Hmm. Which is, I feel like, late for that at 44. Reality shift is exos that. It, 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 do you want to spend over this? I don't know. That's a good question, though. You're right. Well, so I think his, I think Zelensky has access to more. Yeah. To, other effects than this. Yeah. I wonder if he just forgot Suspend exists because the one man yeah, is huge you know. on that card. I mean, Suspend, what is it, two? Like, yeah. you do actually have to win the game. In two turns, that's fair, yeah. Uh, I don't know if Steven's going to take the Hex Mage for his depths. I would think so, but he has so many main deck cards at this point. That like I I don't know that he like what's what's his sideboard look like, you know? Yeah, there there may not be a wasteland taken this entire time, which is wild to me. So we are in the home stretch here. We've got two picks left from everyone but Alec, who Take just one of the, once again one of those cards that's not going to make the main deck. Oh yeah, that's fair. Mesmeric orb, okay. So Brandon going for the Mesmeric Orb Tangle Wire combo. Yeah, we are lucky that even Strip Mine got taken today. Uh, as, as late as that was, which is... I mean, unless there's like a Crucible effect, which I don't know if there is. So I actually talked to him. He said he didn't want to take Crucible because he didn't have enough fetch lands for it to make sense. But after taking the Fast Bond, I was surprised Alec didn't end up with Crucible Strip Mine. I also don't know what Fast Bond does in his deck, because he opted out of the land version of the combo and went for the creature variety. <laughs> but we'll see. You know what card is missing? What's Fabled that? Fabled Passage. Yeah, Fabled Passage hasn't been taken yet. Huh. It's a Soul Guide Lantern out of Dan. Exile each opponents, that makes sense. And then we have an Elvish Promenade. So we, we are going all in on Elves. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no Fabled Passage is surprising because we do have a bunch of two-color decks. Uh, and, you know, arguably a one splash. What is that, Deadly Brew? That's Deadly a Deadly Brew, oh man. Yeah, right? I like that card a lot here. Frozen Aether out of Joe. So he's just late game going for the stasis. Love it. Although the fact that he has the Ice Fang and hasn't drafted snow-covered lands yet is... Do you need to have them? You don't need to have them, no. I mean, it's still fine. But it oh, would... you do have to actually draft the basic... Okay. Yeah, you have to draft the snow-covered, though, in order to have it. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, we changed that after last VRD. Sword of Feast and Famine. Know. Okay. So Mark did go over the rules with everyone beforehand. Okay. Uh, in addition to the fact that the, dra or the draft matters cards 
don't work anymore since we're picking, not drafting. Yeah. It gets rid of the one card combo, you know. Oh, which one card combo? Could you explain this to me? Uh, it was the what was the one John Ryan won with? Um, oh come on! Oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it gives you a tinkerable way to find your combo, your Splinter you Twin combo. You are totally right. No, I'm serious. That that was we we discussed it. That was the decision we made. Uh, yeah, it it sucks because garbage fire doesn't work anymore. Over, man. There's a miscalculation. Literally, last round miscalculation. Jason Thurston, the master troll. Right now. <laughs> Yeah, that, okay, so we have Overmaster and Miscalculation going at pick 45. For the audience, I was the one who came up with that combo. <laughs> <laughs> Just so everyone knows why I'm so upset right now. Yep, that's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love you, Lane. <laughs> All right, so crushing footfalls and a Professor Oryx. So Steven does get his backup win condition for the Witherbloom combo. And then home stretch, here we go. Four more picks. So we've got Mason here, who to this point has no inter no like interaction outside of his discard spells. Elvish Clan Caller. Okay, I like that a lot for him. So, to be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. right, like, I woke up at about, like, 10, 15 St. Louis time. Yeah. And I was like, all right, BRD, because Eric messaged me at, like, 7 a.m. being mm -hmm. like, oh, hey, uh, this is how we're going to get you in. Yeah. And I had forgotten. Um, and then I was like, oh, it's 10, 15. So, they will be, like, about finished with pack one. And you're, like, on pick 23 or something. Yeah. Just, like, when I tune in. And I'm just like, right. Yeah. I'm not drafting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there. I have a tendency to do that. Yeah. This thing, Lauren. That makes sense. Okay. All right. So Brandon That's ended cool. up with Mind's Desire, and Alec got Aluren at the end for the Aluren dungeon run, but nobody drafted the Lich, did they? Or did he? The, he. The, lich? the oh, three mana. Yeah. The dungeon the, lich. Yeah, yeah, the dungeon Lich. Um, nobody ended up with that, so that's that's the that VRD means. in the books. Uh, if you want to sit tight, we're we're gonna get John Ryan in for you to interview Elaine. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm putting them on. All right. Okay. Hello. Hello. What's, what's up? up? <laughs> You don't, you don't have your headset on. Hey, John Ryan, yeah, what's I'm up? Good. Um, well, we just finished the draft, and yeah. I... So I have a question. So what's up? How does this work? Like, did you sacrifice a goat or, like, a cow? For like, what? To be first seed. Oh, no. After winning, <laughs> which I think is the first time that that's happened. I, I actually didn't want to be first seed. First seed's apparently cursed on... The St. Lotus VRD events. The first uh, seed has oh never won. But... I, I mean, <laughs> I don't think that's a function of first seed. I think that's just like there is variance in this format. I think like, uh, all of the first seeds have, have been have done well. Yeah, I think a function of it a little bit is that like Black Lotus lets you like draft a lot of train wrecks versus like a card like Ancestral Recall will just like okay I'm gonna draft this like good blue deck where Black Lotus is just like all right well I have a Black Lotus in my deck I can just draft a garbage pile with you know makeshift mannequins in it. You can't draft garbage pile actually. Uh, gar uh, tra garbage. Uh, trap. What? Garbage fire. Yeah, garbage I'm fire sure. or something. That's the. Oh my god. So how do you feel about your deck? Um, not great. <laughs> I, I, I'm, like, fine with it. Um, but I got <laughs> I got derailed pretty hard when uh, Thassa's Oracle got sniped out of nowhere. I was definitely, I was planning on going into Doomsday, but... Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. The way I drafted it, I was, like, like literally the pick that Thassa's Oracle left, I was going to go, I was going to take uh, Doomsday Thassa's Oracle, but th the way I had been drafting it in the previous, uh, the previous picks, my plan was just, like, okay, I can go into, like, a show-and-tell or, like, a reanimator deck or some other blue-black 
X combo deck if I need to, if that Zorkel, like, vanishes out of nowhere. But, like, I was looking at the other seven drafters, and no one, like, was taking anything close to that Zorkel deck. So I was like, all right, this is free. I can just keep wheeling it. And then just getting <laughs> totally blindsided by Muddle the Mixture into Thassa's Oracle. <laughs> I mean, I don't think people expected you to be playing blue cantraps. I played blue cantraps last time. I had a preordained in my deck. You had... Okay. I think I had some other cantrips. Probably. I yeah. just remember, like... Getting turn really three on, tinker. Really went to the table with Poseju into busted... Well, I drafted that again! I got Poseju and I busted three mana spells! I mean, you don't have instantly win the game. Yes, I only have show and tell, which was also in my deck last time, but... Yeah. It was in the deck. I do remember, because you put in Arcane Savant in game three. Yeah, or, or what, no, the big... Oh. The Aether Searcher. So whatever it is, yeah. Aether Searcher. Aether Searcher. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, luckily the draft matters cards were functionally banned for uh, this one because I, I'm I was kind of I tired know. of drafting those because they're cowards because they're super toxic. <laughs> to be fair, <laughs> I'm pretty sure tough. Aether Searcher is like first second pickable if you're if it's allowed to be in the in the format. That card is so, busted and so easy to put into play. I mean, just five minutes win the game. I think is like about the power level that that this. Yeah, I think Arc Arcade Savant's, like, more okay. Five mana win the game dies to removal spells. Aether Searcher's just fucked up. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, you have to be playing Tinker or the other thing. Yeah, right? Tinker, but... Show and Tell, Sneak Attack. There are a lot. You could, like, reanimate it, too. It's an ETB. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. So many ways to cheat an artifact into play. That's fair. Oh, my God. So, who, who in, on this table are you the most scared of? Um, probably An uh, no, not Andrew. Wait, is Andrew the one second pick? Yeah, the blue yeah. white control deck. Probably the, a mixture of removal. Yeah, the mixture of removal spells and counter spells. Like some you can just like easily play around. Like if it's just a pile of counter spells, there's a way to work through that. Right. And if it's just like some like permanent based hate, you can work through that. But like the the, the mixture is what gets you. You can keep like the turn yeah. one hands and get force of negation, or you like go take it slow and then like get your crystal brand source of plowshares mm -hmm. or whatever. Just one copy of Unmask to see what's going on. I have a Thought Erasure. I mean, but you can't... That, that does not protect your turn one. Uh, yeah, but I don't think the deck's going off on turn one too often. But yeah, um, I was planning on... Like like I said, I was planning on drafting Doomsday, and like... I was going to go very black-based and like a very light blue splash to like actually, you know, cast Thassa's Oracle and maybe like a blue card or two. But I was going to like cut a bunch of discard spells super early and then the discard went so fast i got nothing there are is other discards like you can get like the rest of the discards they were already scraping the bottom of the barrel no we're not in terms of in terms of taking in terms of taking discard spells that like like a reanimator or like a combo that cares about like sure i'm not gonna be casting divest and not divest is is that the one that like takes an artifact or a creature i don't know uh yeah yeah, like, I'm not going to be taking Divest in this deck. You want, like, Duress, you want Thoughtseize, uh, Unmask, Grief, stuff like that. You don't really... I mean, there's a lot of two-mana effects. Yeah, two-mana is, like, a lot worse. You can take, like, um, the two-mana Thoughtseize, whatever, like, that one's yeah. called. But... Agonizing Remorse? Um, but, uh, yeah, at that point, it stops being, like, turn one combo, like, Thoughtseize, you kill you stuff. It becomes it sure. just becomes a lot slower. So yeah. I I had a lot That's of options at that, at that stage. Yeah. Uh, no thoughts of taking Legion Warboss and Kin. Oh, going that way? Like, I I, I have a good I mean, enough pivot plan. Took, I mean, when you took the pack rat, I thought that's where you were going. I mean, I don't need, like, Legion War or, like, a, I don't think the pivot plan needs, like, three mana red cards, right? I have three mana black cards. You can go, like, turn one Dark Rit, um, Sedgemore Witch or Rotting Regisaur. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Stuff like that. So, like, there, I took, like, a, I hope, at least, a reasonable pivot plan. <laughs> yeah. And I also don't I, I also don't think like people are packing a lot of graveyard hate. Like I don't think Leyland of the Void is even that good enough for like a one of in a forty card deck, stuff like that. I don't think that's I don't think it's there for graveyard hate. I think it's there for the helm. Right? I mean yeah, the helm got picked up later, but just like there are like a couple graveyard hate cards here or there, but I think with the mix of like show and tell and like um yeah. and just being able to like hardcast some stuff, you have black lotus in your deck. It's sure. it's easy enough. So are you saying you're gonna run a bath? 
Uh, that's the plan. I'm gonna get okay. first seat uh, a win. Okay. It's just, 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 just come on, Brian. You heard it here first. He says he's going to win. Yeah. He's one hundred percent gonna win here. I'm going to win. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Gonna crush right. it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go let you go with your deck. It All right, seems yeah. pretty close already, but you know. I got yeah. I gotta just figure out exact numbers. Figure out yeah. what cards are gonna be end of main deck. But yeah, I think I have mm -hmm. a a solid plan. That's a pretty good idea. It feels like like after talking to you the past at uh, 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 the past fairy, like a lot of the insights that you have, like it's like yeah, these are the things that are important in this format, and I think you've like figured that out. Yeah. So. The big thing is the pivot between, like, oh, I'm just going to keep taking good cards for my deck, and then re realizing you have, like, 40 playables, but you can only main deck, you know, yes. 20, whatever. Yes. You do have to, like, switch and start taking sideboard cards, because you, your main deck's already done at, at a certain mm -hmm. stage. So, like, my last, like, uh, 10 picks or whatever are just, like, lands and sideboard cards. Yeah, that makes sense. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. All right. Well. All right, I'll let the commentators, good luck. commentators come back in. Yeah. Mm hmm Texas Thassa's Oracle went to like, I don't know. Thassa's Oracle went. Uh, I know what you're going to You're good at sequencing. We had Thassa's Oracle, I believe, in the last period, and it wasn't. Alright, well, that was an exciting draft. Alright. Yep, you are muted. Alrighty. Okay, fixed. Elaine, you're here? Yes, I am. Can you hear Elaine? No? Okay, whoop. Yeah. All right, we are ready to get started you, then. No? Okay, no. Cool, I guess not. All right, well, Elaine, we're about to get started. I want to thank you for chiming yeah. in on commentary. It's Seriously. always a pleasure. <laughs> Hopefully next time you can actually come. And we'll see. I, we'll save a spot for you whenever you're ready. You tell us, yeah. and you're guaranteed we'll get you in. Okay, all right. All I'll right. Stick around and chat. Um, Sounds good. And see what happens. All right. Have fun. Yep. Thank you. Take care. All righty, guys. So we are gameplay. We don't have anyone yet. Oh, <laughs> John and Elaine. You can tell what happened last time. That's beautiful. All right. So there is the draft area. You can see they're sleeving up there. Um, we've got. Brandon, Alex. So I talked to Alec about the Aluren pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone said Aluren out loud, and he said, "Oh, I should get that because I have cheap creatures." Oh, we have we our. We have a yes. small commentator change. Oh, hello. Small commentator, the right smallest. there. He's the smallest. He's like our mascot. <laughs> All right. I don't know if anyone has mentioned library to the drafters yet. But Library Mark, of Alexandria. Mark, can you just go into the room and say Library of Alexandria. I want to hear what happens. <laughs> According to someone in the other room, the card is terrible. <laughs> yeah. So it turns out the card is terrible, and that's why it was not drafted. You heard it here first. Elvish Clan Caller, VRD ready. <laughs> Library of Alexandria. Poop. Garbage. It's Get bad. Out of it's here. real bad. All right, so what? Now that we have the full deck lists, what's mm. your favorite deck? Uh, it's it's still Dan Zelensky's. It's, okay. I I mean I have a uh, I I love Underworld Breach. Underworld Breach is maybe my favorite card printed in a long time. He picked up Isochron Scepter Dramatic Reversal near the end of the draft. He refers to this as the Thurston Special because I run it in every CEDH deck I have. Well, yeah, yeah. Dramatic Scepter is, <laughs> yeah, uh, is it's a great, great combo. <laughs> And then the Reality Shift, which is one of my favorite idiot yeah. removal spells, so it's great to see it here. And he's just, he, he did also, he did wound me deeply by picking Rune Snag and Quench when Miscalculation was available. Yeah, I, how did Miscalc go last? So here's my theory. Here's my theory about that. Can you go up to where um, Mr. Okay, so Misdirection got picked right around the same time as like Lose oh, Focus and, yeah. uh, and some of those other cards. Which so, would have been when Miscalculation was picked. Yes. Mis so they probably thought. Yeah. So I think everybody just assumed. And then once somebody picks Runesnag, you're like, Miscalc doesn't exist, right? Yeah. And then, and That's then fair. Andrew just picks it up like 40th or whatever. and everybody, 45th. 45th. Literal 45th. He picked. He, he last picked Miscalculation. He floated Miscalculation so late he got to pick Jawari Disruption, a card I called, by the way, before he took it. That yeah. is unreal. We also had some interesting things where 
some of the pathways went before the pain lands, which yeah. I thought was wild. Yeah. We were picking, like, Clearwater Pathway got picked, and Underground River was still out there, and I had to, like, like I had to, I had to go to Stop the bathroom, my, yeah. basically. <laughs> yeah. I, I had, it took everything in me to not, like, during the break, be like, pain lands exist, guys, yeah. come on! Like, pain lands, I, filters, there's just, there, you know. The only filter drafted was Steven. Yep. Twilight Mire. That's the took, only one that got Twilight drafted. Mire, but like, yeah, like, I think he got the only Painland too. Uh, yeah, he got the uh, Lanowar Wastes as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like I'm shocked. I'm shocked Andrew didn't just deck out his deck with like a Dark R Wastes and and yeah, Storm Coast just to have stuff. all of the fixing and filtering he would need because like yeah, because he he has, he has Tundra. His 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 main deck is 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 big, right? He has two yeah. main deck cards. He he could have taken a couple more lands, I think. Yeah, and I, I think that's a similar problem to what Joe's going to run into, yep. is he has Taiga and Volk, but other than that, and City of Brass, other than that, he doesn't have a mass of non-basics, because, like, as Elaine touched on, when you're in Delver, you need all your mana every turn. You need every color for every spell. Yep. And he's just not going to have that. He's going to be flooded on basics in a three-color deck that he didn't even pick a Triome. <coughs> We're seeing, by the way... We're seeing players bolding the cards that they're, I believe, the cards that are going in their main deck. Yes. So that's kind of how we do deck lists here at VRD. You do have to select the main deck, just like you would at a competitive limited tournament. But instead of printing out deck lists, because that's too much work, we're just bolding the cards that they're playing with. Yeah. Uh, so Dark Depths, Thespian Stage, Chain, Wither Bloom. Yep. Uh, Void, Void Walker. Walker. Yeah. I have to assume Helm is in there. Where did Helm go? All, all the, the way, way down, down there. 43rd. Okay. Yep. When we talked about the discipline of the players that could have potentially taken Helm, yes, I did not expect it to get to second or third to last pick. I didn't think we would get out of 16 to 30 with yeah. Helm still on the table. I also really like Steven's deck hyphenated. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I... I, I, I don't usually think of green black as the shell in VRD for for the two card combo deck, but and yet here it is. Here right? it is, yeah. So that's this very has impressive. three two card combos. Yeah. One of which has or two of which have redundancy. Yeah, and one of which makes you attack. That's fine. Yeah, sure. But the other two are just kills. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's fascinating to me because as Elaine and I were talking about. There's not a whole lot of A plus B combo decks. This is, especially for VRD, a really fair metagame. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it's wild because we have, you know, Alex deck kind of has, you know, the walking ballista finish. Yeah, or the scurry oak. Or the scurry oak. But it's dudes that are going to try to ping down your life total. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we have elves, like just straight elves. We have a green-black mid-range that has some two-card combos, but only has two tutors and no card draw. Yep. So you're not looking at a lot of filtering there to get to your combo pieces. And then you have Delver. Yep. And then you have blue-white kind of control. Blue-white control with the vault finish. Yep. Uh, And then it's like, all right, well, here's a reanimator show-and-tell list and tin wheels and a mill deck. But other than that, You've got like five fair decks here. Yeah, it, you you do, and and John Ryan's John Ryan's deck kind of has that that he I think he was saying to Elaine the like Black Lotus Curse of the Bambino where like you can't be in the first seat and win it. So it, it, yeah. St. Lotus, you can't you can't do it. No, unfortunately. Yeah, and and so he got he he got uh, he got hit real hard in the middle of the of the draft and had to pivot a little bit. Yeah. But I'm interested to see what he's going to come out with. I love the like. Pack rat rotting register pickups that he made. I there. thought that was great. The pack rat pick, especially because there's no wrath, not a single wrath yep. on this board. And then he got the only one. Sorry, massacre. Yes, he has massacre, which is great for wiping out Alex deck, right? Yeah. And then he's got uh, Elish Norn as well. VRD always produces. Like I just, I just want to watch VRD games forever. And obviously, yeah. you know, you got to keep it special. You can't do it every day. But this is really something. I stasis I will say chronotog. yeah the stasis chronotog it, into frozen aether into well, frozen aether come on that's amazing that's so beautiful stasis like, chronotog is such a good combo you I love used that to have to play white for uh, stasis kismet but now you can just put frozen aether in yep, your deck and sure can and uh, who can, oh yeah oh yeah Steven does have toxic deluge that's yeah correct. that's our other wrath yeah and of course paying life in this format is very affordable yeah very much so um, and yeah Steve Steven has the most removal. Mm-hmm. He has the most interaction. Yep. Like, he just has a really solid 
good deck. I also love Chains, Main, and Bitter Blossom. And he's got a good sideboard, too. Defense, I, Grid, Null Rod, and, uh, and Lattice, all of which he can pull out with Karn the Great Creator. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah. I, I think that he... And Curse Totem he, on top of that. He Revoker. did so well in the middle yeah. of the draft. Really oh, yeah. Incredible. Oh, Questing Beast is not main for him. That's interesting. I would have thought that would have been mm. a backup. Maybe I'm going to beat face, but I guess Bitter Blossom is also very good at doing that. Bitter Blossom so. will take care of the uh, it, take care of everything for you in that regard, I think. And Ignoble's here to fix things up. Yeah, this deck. Oh. Yeah. This. The, the more I look at this, the more I think. No offense, Dan. I love the Thurston Special. This may be my favorite deck. Is of... Steven's deck the best non-blue deck that we've ever seen here? Just looking at it now. I think objectively, yes. Right. That's that's what I think too. And obviously, you know. Time, time will tell. We'll see in the uh, the seven round robin, you know, matches who comes out on top. Yeah. But I think Steven's got a good shot as as long as he, uh, you know, as long as he plays well and draws well. You know. Yeah. The the games will show that it it may be the best non blue deck if in fact it is the best non blue deck. I will also say that uh, one thing that that really favors Steven is the current Mulligan rule. Decks like this are really, really. Well, well treated by the current mulligan. Yeah, the 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 fair mulligan is the the fair decks benefit from this mulligan a lot more than the unfair decks yeah. do. Um, it it'll be. Yes, please come on down. Great. No. Okay, cool. All right, so looks like we have Stephen and Mason. So we're gonna be on the blue black mid range two card combo list and elf hoof. I love it. This this is just a legacy match, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, we're we're really we're we're just playing actual legacy constructed. Yeah, I'm I'm totally okay with that for the record. Yeah, I'm into it. Uh, I I have no issues. Despise. I love this card. And are we maining it, Stephen? Uh, yes, we he is are maining, maining he despise. Needs that discard. He's uh he's he's a little bit a little bit lower on on the discard ladder than uh than some other folks. Mason really. Yeah. Really got a lot of that stuff. Chewed, uh, chewed things up. Yeah, that's the thing about this format is that these folks are are basically building their decks as they go, right? Yeah. You know, you know when you pick something. All right, this is main deck for me. Thanks, Dougie G. Appreciate you. We've been drafting for what? Four hours or something? Four hours yeah. now. Yeah, so, four hours. So these folks have had time to really hammer things out. Okay. Camera is old. Oh, is it? I guess, oh, it's, yeah, the oh, camera yes, hasn't yes, updated. Yes, yes, yes. Uh... Oh, we we did unplug that camera, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, that's because we were trying to figure out the uh, power the situation for the, the overhead. Yep. The VRD setup is very complex. I gotta say, our our tech setup. We are not wild. professional tech guys. We're kind of. Yeah, we're 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 it's it's held together with safety pins and duct tape. I promise you. And uh, I mean, our audio situation just as much so by evidence by the fact that only one of us could hear Elaine at the time. Yes. <laughs> uh, which, which, by the way, I know how to fix for next time. Do we, okay, cool. Do we have the hair dryer? <laughs> 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 Elaine, of course, is referring to... So, we have a... We, last VRD, we had a system by which the folks in the booth could alert the players that they need, at the feature match that they needed to stop because uh, something uh, rules something, yeah. And our system for that was we had a button we could press that would turn a hair dryer on next to the match because we, we didn't have a light, we didn't have a buzzer, <laughs> but we did have a hair dryer. We did because this is a home where people dry their hair. I don't need a hair dryer. I don't. No. I don't know much about that. I need a blowout now and then, but other yeah. than that, you know, I'm good. I mean, sometimes you get a perm, sometimes you get a blowout. I get it. Uh, yeah, here, uh, go ahead and go 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 to the source and right click it, cause here I'll yeah, let you do I'll, it. I'll do some. You're the OBS guy. Some streamer crap. OBS, by the way, guys, if you haven't used it, is one of the most user friendly softwares uh, out there in the entire world, and I highly recommend that everyone try it if they ever have to stream. It's a great soft, great piece of software. I'm just gonna switch sources and then switch back. Okay. There we go. It's it's fresh now. We are live. Yep. All right.